Bad mistake, turn my back. I walk off there. Boom! Bop, bop, bop! And tell him we finna run down. And if he got a problem, well, we gonna have to run down on him too. We not gonna disrespect the sin, but we, I gotta go in. I gotta go in there. I had these new pairs of Air Force Ones. Straight crispy. Where I was at, if you couldn't fight for your stuff, you was gonna get it taken. I'ma say that again. If you come in there with some Timberlands, some Air Force Ones, Jordans, if you couldn't fight, somebody was gonna take them. So this is why I was surprised how my Air Force Ones end up missing. Let's get to it. So here I go. And dude's like, oh, them boys is wet. Them boys is nice. So, you know, I'm just walking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they straight. They cool. Dude's coming to me like, yo, man, let me get them up off you, man. What can I give you for those right now? What can I give you for those right now? Dude's coming over there with commissary bags. They like, yo, he go 30 packs of noodles. He go 15 mountain dudes. Whatever you need, I got you. This dude's over there like, yo, hey, I'm a tattoo dude, man. I give you three free tattoos, man. Any type of tattoos you want, let me get them shoes. I got a cell phone. On, bro, I got you. I got you. You can't have it, but I'll let you use it whenever you want to use it. Let me get those. Let me get those. Let me get those. Let me get those. Nah, this is the only thing I got in here. One day, I'm in my cell. I'm sitting down. This guy walked past, and he was a known thief. Thou shall not steal. So he walked past my cell, and I jump up, and I'm like, yo, can I help you? He like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I was just seeing with your, with, your, with your bunkie in there. He owed me something. I said, no, nah, he ain't in here, and he ain't going to be back for a minute. He said, all right, all right, all right, bro. I get back in my bed, and I take my shoes out, and I'm cleaning them. While locked up, man, you better find a hobby. Cleaning shoes was a joy for me. Cleaning my shoes, I should say. And before y'all try to throw these jokes around, say, oh, he was out there cleaning shoes, you better find you a hustle or you gonna starve. If you ain't got people on the outside that's supporting you, giving you money, you better find you a hustle. My hustle was not cleaning shoes. My hustle was not cleaning nobody's drawers, okay? I know how to cut hair. So I was a barber in there, cleaning nobody's drawers. That was my hustle. Cleaning nobody drawers. He walked past again. He like, hey, bro, are you the one that be cutting hair? Now, at this time, I'm sitting on my bunk and I'm cleaning my shoes. I said, yeah, 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 that's me. Why? What's up? In hindsight, I'm like, hold up. He know I cut hair. I cut his hair like a month ago. What is he talking all right, whatever. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He like, hey, uh, when can I get a cut? Let me check my list right quick. So then I get up and I go to my spot and I got my notebook and I'm looking. I said, you can, you can, uh, I said, you, I said, I got Friday around three o'clock that's open. That's good for you? He said, yeah, 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 that's good, bro. That's good, bro. Now, what, where I cut hair at is downstairs, okay, in the day room. Five o'clock. Friday, 5 o'clock. So, I'm down there cutting. I do not have my shoes on. My celly is in the room taking a nap. So, I don't think that nobody's going to go into my cell. Ain't nobody ever went into my cell. I never thought somebody was going to go in my cell. So, I'm down there cutting here. 5 o'clock come. It's two dudes waiting that did not have an appointment. And I'm waiting for um dude to come. The thief to come. He don't show up. So, I'm like, alright, let me get this dude two more minutes. 5.02 now. 5.03. 5.04. Alright, y'all. Come on. Who next? So I'm cutting hair, not really thinking about it. I don't know. This dude could be, he could be in the shower, getting one off. I don't know where this dude at, but whatever. It ain't my business, it ain't my concern. He missed his appointment, so now he got to wait till next week. So I'm cutting hair, cutting hair, cutting hair. I'm done. It's 6.30. Pack everything up, clean up everything. I'm out. I go to my cell, put the clippers up. Then I go under my bed and go to my box to put my forces on. So I open the box, and I'm like, hold up, where the... Where's my shoes? So I tap my bunk like, yo, hey, yo, somebody been in the cell? He rolled over. He like, huh? I said, was well, somebody in the cell? He like, no, nah. no, nobody went in. I said, yo, somebody stole. I'm walking the cell to cell, looking in. I don't see nobody. Yo, why you looking at my cell, yo? I said, listen, I ain't got time for that. Somebody stole my shoes. He like, oh, for real, bro? I said, yeah, somebody stole my shoes. He like, oh, okay, okay. Now let me tell y'all something. This is prison etiquette. You do not, I repeat, you do not look in another man's cell. Looking in another man's cell could get your head cracked wide open to the white meat. So I'm walking. I'm mad now. Cell to cell. Peeking in. Scanning every shoe. I don't see it. I'm like, man. So I'm trying to piece the time together. One of my homeboys walk up to me like, yo, what's up? I said, man, don't say nothing. But somebody stole my white forces. I want you to look around. Keep your ear out. But nobody had no white forces that I'm aware of. Keep your ear out there and let me know if they turn up. And he's like, all right, I got you. I got you. Four days later, the thief comes from commissary. The thief comes from the store. Four big bags. 
walking down there with them bags like this. Four big bags. So I'm looking like, looking out like, dude ain't got no money. Four big bags. Hold up. Y'all know, like in the hood, right, when somebody ain't got no money and y'all know he never had no money and get no money, then he just pull up. He pull up in a nice car and he got money. And you're like, hold on. who? He done hit a lick. He done did something. This is how I'm looking at him. So I'm looking at him. My homeboy come to me. He like, hey, hey. I said, yeah, I already know. I already know. So I said, this is what we going to do. When he go into his room, we going to apply that pressure. I said, go talk to his celly right now and tell him we finna run down. And if he got a problem, we going to have to run down on him too. We not gonna disrespect the said, but we I gotta go in. I gotta go in there. He shoot over there to do Sally. He over there playing cards. He like, yo, can I highlight you right quick? He's like, yeah, what's up, bro? He's he like, yo, hey, you know your Sally. He's a thief. He stole my man's shoes. He got all this commissary, and he like, yo, bro, do your thing, man. Just don't touch none of my stuff. My stuff is at the top bunk. All my stuff up there, don't touch it. He like, all right, bro, I got you. So he come over there. He tell me like, yeah, it's all good. So dude in his cell, the thief is in his cell. He breaking down his bags and stuff. So I come in there. I said, yo, where them shoes at? He like, bro, what you talking about? I said, don't, don't bro me. He like, yo, yo, chill. So then my homeboy come in there too. Dude jump up. So we bagging him down. I said, where that? Where's that? He like, bro, I ain't got nothing. Bagging him down. I don't got nothing. I said, where's my shoes at? They already told me that you sold my shoes to somebody on another block. He, who, who said that? Who, who? I said, dude, where's my shoes at? So we bagging them down. He like, bro, I don't got your shoes. I don't know what you're talking about. So I said, what? Bam! Popped them in the mouth. Bam! So we bagging them down. He like, bro, bro, why you hit me? <laughs> Spit out some blood. I'm like, go get my right now. Matter of fact, so I took two of the bags and I gave it to my home. I said, go. I said, take these. Take these. Right, he like, bro, that's my stuff. I said, what? Run up again. He like, bro, man, I can't let you take my stuff. I can't let you take my stuff, bro. I'm like, what you mean, take your stuff? Really? This mine. All oh, this is mine. Matter of fact, taking stuff. I, my man told me, yeah, don't touch the stuff up there. That's his bunkies. I'm grabbing stuff. He like, man, bro, chill, man, chill. So now he acting like he want to get big and bad now. So he like, man, I'm about to. So then my homeboy walked up on him and pulled out that blade. And was like, what? You about to do what? You about to do what? Grabbing his stuff, putting most stuff in commissary bag. I put the last two bags over my shoulder and I'm like, we out. So I'm walking down the tears and I put the stuff in my room. He comes to the cell like, man, that's messed up, man. That's messed up. I'm like, man, dude, get up out of here. He like, man, no, no, man. Y'all got to leave me with something, man. I didn't take your shoes. I didn't take your shoes. I said, listen, bro. Either we can either we can go to the bathroom, right? And we can run his face. We can do that right now. He like, bro, man, man, we just going to have to, man. We're going to have to fight. I said, all right, let's go. So we go downstairs. I tell my homeboy, watch out. So me and dude go in the bathroom. We getting it on. Bop, bop, bop. I'm catching him. He had thought he couldn't fight at all. He threw a punch. I weaved it, ducked it. Boom, boom. You got enough. And that's enough fight for you. You got your feel. Boom, boom, boom. Putting it on. I'm putting, I'm putting it on him. He like, bro, man, I don't even care no more. Man, this my stuff, man. You ain't got shut up. Bop, bop, bop. At this point, I ain't really trying to. I'm not trying to really hurt him, hurt him bad, because I'm not trying to get no charges. It's okay to get into a fight while locked up, but you better not knock their teeth out. You better not cause no severe damage. And I'm good with these, as y'all can tell. As y'all can tell. As y'all can tell. Bop, bop, bop. I knew my limit. I knew my strength. So it got to a point where I'm like, dude, I'm done. I walk off. Bad mistake. Turn my back. I walk off there. Boom. Bop, bop, bop. Punch me in the back of the head. I'm like, oh, you going to hit me with my back turn? Damn. Bop, bop. Right, he fall and he about to hit the floor, but I hit him and grab him because he was about to budge his head. I said, Don't you ever hit me in the back of my head. Beep, 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 beep. Nick, loady, gun, 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 gun. So he laid out, knocked out, laid out, did this man a pillow in a blanket. I put him to bed. He knocked out, step over him. I go out there, my homeboy, like, Yeah, yeah, that's right. So then I walk off, go back upstairs. Three days later, prison stuff. Ain't nothing really to talk about. A fight is a fight. There's fights that's going on every day, all day. Dudes getting stabbed. Dudes getting ran down on. Dudes getting jumped. You know, this prison. If you don't want to fight, don't come to jail. Days go by, and he come to me. He like, yo, bro, the thief. That I put them hands on. He like, bro, hey, I didn't take your shoes, but I know who did. I said, I said, dude, get up out of here, man. He like, no, bro, seriously, I know who took your shoes, man. I know who took, because he came to me and asked me, did I want to get down on the plate? And I told him no. But since I just got my ass whooped and he didn't help me, it was the white boy, white boy Kevin. He did it. 
I said, huh? He said, yeah, man, white boy Kevin did it. You remember y'all when I told y'all in the last video, you do not snitch in jail or that can come with problems. Well, in this case, sometimes if you tell on somebody and the person that you tell that to, keep, keep it between y'all two, then nothing will happen. So I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, bro. I didn't want to say nothing because you know how it is. I said, listen. I'm going to go down there and holler at Kevin. But if you lying to me, he said, bro, bro, I swear to God, matter of fact, we both can go down there right now. We both can. Now, he getting hype. We both can go down there right now, man. We both can go down there right now, man. Wiping his tears. So I said, all right, man, come on. Chill out. Let's go. So I'm mobbing down there. My homeboy like, yo, what's up? Because when I get to walking like this, I'm up to no good. So my homeboy seen it, he like, oh, he about to go do something. So he walked, he said, what's up? I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna go holler at white boy Kevin. So Kevin is over there talking to the guards. So he see me looking at him and see, and he see the thief right here. See my homeboy right here in the background. So he probably got a hiss it like, oh shoot. He told him, he know. So I'm standing there like this. Like, yeah, I know. So he talking to the guard. Next thing you know, the guard looked right over there at me. He said, Dante, come here. I walk over there. I say, yo, what's up? He like, so you out here threatening people? You talking about you finna stab him? Put dude on blast in front of everyone. I said, what? Man, I ain't finna do nothing to Kevin. Why, why would I stab Kevin for? He like, he said, well, well, I see you over there. I, I, I said, why would you say that? I didn't I didn't say nothing to you. He said, well, y'all, you were standing there. And, and I'm like, dude, ain't nobody thinking about you. So the CEO was like, Dante, I'm telling you, if you do anything else in here, you go into the hole for a whole year. I said, man, I ain't. All right, man, whatever. So I walk off. I go to the thief. I say, yo, check this out. I can't do nothing to him because the CEO is on my ass up in here. So I'll tell you what. i give you half of your commissary back if if you go put that work in on Kevin. He like, all right, bro, say less. Say less. I said, matter of fact, do it before we go on lockdown. All right, bro, say less. So me and a couple of my partners over here playing spades. Playing spades, right? I'm not really even playing like that. I'm over here looking at the thief creep over there to Kevin's cell. He go up in there. He took off. He run up in there. <clears throat> All you hear is, <coughs> right? So I'm thinking like, okay, he in there, he in there doing it. So I get up from the table and I walk, I walk past the cell. The thief in there getting his ass whooped by Kevin. Kevin in there like, but fighting. Fighting for his life, like boom, boom, fight. He, you know how girls be windmilling like this. He windmilling like that. Kevin get his ass whooped in there. Boom. I mean, Kevin in there winning. My fault, y'all. Boom, boom, windmilling. The thief in there getting beat down. So it's funny to me now. <laughs> so I look in there and I'm like, damn, he getting beat. So then I just walk off. Then I go upstairs and go lay down. About 10 minutes later, he come upstairs. The thief come upstairs all out of breath. He like, oh, bro, I just, yo, let me get that. I said, let you get what? He like, let me, let me get, let me get the conversation. Let me get my stuff. I said, what stuff? He like, come on, bro, stop playing. I said, what? I jumped off my bed. I'm like, what? He like. You, you say you was going, I said, I ain't tell you nothing. Get up out of here. He like, oh, this messed up. It's messed up, bro. This messed up. So he walks off. Let me tell y'all something. If you are a known thief, sometimes when stuff end up missing and you didn't take it, you, you are still going to get blamed. Because every time, if you known to take stuff and steal it, 
people automatically gonna think that you took something that's missing. I made that mistake of thinking that he took my shoes and he really didn't. White boy Kevin did it. Just like in real life in the streets, we all got them family members that you, every time they come around, you gotta hide your purse, you gotta put your wallet up, you gotta cut the cameras on in the house. We all got that family member that you just know that they gonna take some klepto. Kleptomaniacs, right? I don't condone violence, but when you locked up, it is what it is. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do and ask questions later. Hit that like button. I'm out. Hey, come here, bro. Hey, you telling people that I... Why you going around put my name in your mouth? One would say that women are the biggest gossipers in the world. That's what people usually would say. Nah, in prison, in prison, men are the biggest gossipers in the universe. You would think that men would not be out there running a mile. You would think that men, if they hear something about somebody, that they keep it to themselves. Well, men is way worse than women. I can, I can assure, I can tell y'all that for a fact. This guy was running his mouth about a situation that he had no business running his mouth about. When it got back to the guy that he was talking about, he knocked his teeth out of his mouth. His whole front's gone. Let's get to it. Peep the scene. You got Darnell on the phone with his mama. Here we go. Hello? Hey, ma, what's up? What's going on? Everybody good, ma? Okay. Okay. What is it? Yeah, I'm I'm good. Yeah, what's going on, ma? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. What 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 what'd you say? You said my wife did what? For real? Hold up. Hold on, you who? Man, you do know he he's right? <sighs> then the phone hangs up. Man, I can't believe this dude. Man, I can't believe this dude, man. Damn, man, my wife. Oh, man, man. So he walks off and go to his cell. He land on his bunk. He talking to his bunkie. He like, man, man, my wife just this dude that got AIDS, man. And she came, my wife came to my mom and told her that she got it. She got HIV. His bunkie like, hey, bro, that's messed up. He like, man, I, man, I got five more years up in here. Like, come on, man. She could like, like, what? So they have an exchange. Him and his bunkie having this conversation how his wife got HIV by messing with this man that she had no business messing with. There's a guy named Leroy that's one cell over. He hear this conversation. His ears is glued to the wall. He listening, he listened to dual conversation. So he hears it. All he really hear is that my wife HIV. He takes that and he runs with it. It's lunchtime now. It's lunchtime now. He in the chow hall talking to his homies. He like, hey, so and so, man, he was talking to his wife on the phone earlier and uh, he was he blew up and I guess she told him that she had and he got it. See, let me tell y'all something about prison. Here's the original story. You got somebody that says, hey, the sky is blue on Monday. You tell that to somebody, by the time it get back to you, the sky was zigzag. That's how things get so twisted up in prison. So he tells this guy, and then this guy tell another guy, then another guy tell another guy about what he said. You got cats in there that like to smoke you got cats in there that eat cook-ups together. You know, they bust down their spread. They get their ramen noodles. They get their squeeze it cheese. They beef jerky. The guy, particularly who I'm talking about, who wife got by messing around, he's in charge of cooking the spreads. He can make the cook-ups real good. So time and time again, sometimes when he cooking the spread, he had tasted. Well, word done got around that he got but he really don't. So now Cat's like, he like, yo, we finna do a cook up. Who putting one in? Who putting in on it? Dude's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. You know, hey, you you putting in on the spread? I'm about to cook it up. Nah, I'm good. I'm straight. All right. What's up with these dudes, man? Acting like they don't want to get out on the spread. Two, three days later, he's in the shower washing up. He overhear his name and two dudes mouth. They talking about, man, yeah, he talking about, do we want to put in on the spread? But I ain't about to get that shit that he got. Hell no, man. I came in here with nothing. I'm leaving out of here with nothing. So he hear his name and he like, what the? Hold up, what did this say? Now let me tell y'all something about prison etiquette. You do not talk to another man while you in the shower, while you butt booty neck. It's disrespectful. Don't be sitting up there trying to talk to me 
while I'm naked with soap all over my body and you want to have a conversation. Wait till I get this soap off my body and dry off and go to my cell and then we can talk. Don't be trying to hold conversation with me while I'm naked and vulnerable. So he like, oh, heck no. Nah. You know, he get, he hop up off the shower. He go upstairs. He put his stuff on. His bunkie in there. His bunkie like, yo, I got to talk to you about something. He like, what's up? He like, man, hey, somebody, somebody going around here talking about you. Bro, he like what? So this what these dudes was talking about in the shower. So he put his stuff on. He walk up on the tier. He looked to his left. He looked to his right. He like, hey, if anybody got something to say about me, I'm right here. Whoever out there spreading these lies and these rumors about me, I'm right here. Come holla at me. So everybody looking like, oh snap. I mean, it's all around the pod already. So he like, matter of fact, who out here running my name through the mud like that? Who spread this vicious lie about me? Ain't nobody really said nothing. So he said, all right, when I find out who started that rumor about me, I'm busting them in the mouth. Then he walked off and went back to his cell. At this point in time, I'm over here watching the National Geographic Discovery Channel. You know, I got my headphones in. I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around like, yo, what's up? It's him. He like, hey, bro, listen. I know you don't be into nothing, but I know you keep your ear to the pod. So, have anybody came to you personally and said that I had <laughs> to HIV or something? I'm like, nah, ain't nobody tell me nothing like that. I mean, I mean, I heard it around. He's like, well, who did you hear from? I, mean, I just heard it, you know, just, you know, through past. You know, if it ain't true, it ain't true. He like, no, that ain't true. It ain't true. I said, all right, all right, cool, bet. So he like, bro, come on, man, come on. Let, let man, tell, who, where, who did you hear from? For you new inmates out there, let me tell y'all something. In the real world, if you commit a crime with somebody and y'all get caught and y'all both agree mutually to commit a crime, you better keep your mouth closed and do your time. If you out in the real world and you see a woman getting robbed by a man, call the police. Tell on his ass. Call the police. Call the police. Call the police. Call the police. You have the right to tell on the criminal. In prison, on the flip side, you better keep your mouth closed, okay? Because you will be in danger if you open your mouth and tell on another inmate. So when he asked me again, I said, come on, bro. You know how I go down up here, man. I can't tell you what, who I heard that from. He looked me up and down. He was like, bro, all right, man. All right, all right. He walked off because he knew. He knew I was a solid dude. He knew I couldn't tell him that. I'm not no snitch inside of prison. But y'all heard what I said early. If people out here committing crime against people that can't defend themselves, call the police. Everybody did not sign up to be a criminal. Call the police. Everybody did not sign up to be a gangster. Call the police. The police serve their purpose. Call the police. Call the police. But you better not call the police while you locked up, though. Handle your business. Let's get back to it. So he walk off. He like, you know what? He getting hyped now. Man, I'm telling you. I'm about to, man, I'm about to, man, who said that? Who out here talking about that? So he walking up on dudes like, you out here talking about me? You out here talking about me? But he running up on dude that ain't really got no size on him. He running up on dudes that he know that ain't going to push that knife. Hey, come here, bro. Hey, you telling people that I... You out there telling people that, huh? You telling people I got... Man, no, no, bro. No, I I didn't. I don't even know you like that. I, I don't know. Hey, bro. Hey, come here. I'm telling you right now. Who out here telling people that I got... Who is that telling people that? I don't know, bro. I, I mean, I just heard it around. What, 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 so he's just going off on everybody. He go off on everybody. He walking up to people, running down on dudes. He done cornered this white guy, put the pressure on him. White guy on the phone, talking to whoever he talking to. He walk up on him. Hey, you heard about somebody talking about I got something up in here? Is that you around here spreading rumors about me? Huh? Is that you out here talking about that I got something? Huh? Is you out here running your mouth? Dude on the phone. Why you doing on the phone like? My man take the phone, take the, take his phone and hang it up. Like, you hear me talking to you? Is you out here talking about me? About me behind my back? He like, yo, why did you do that? I'm... I'm talking to my, I'm talking to my wife. What are you doing? So he grabbed a white dude, like push him against the wall. Like, you better tell me right now. It's you the one out here spreading rumors on me. Now I'm going to keep it funky with y'all. That's the only guy that he put hands on. That's the only guy that he put that real pressure, raw pressure on. He didn't do that to none of the black dudes though. Cause he knew some of them dudes as soon as he would have, first of all, when he hung that phone up, it should have been an instant. Bow! If that was me, if I'm on the phone with my woman, what's up, babe? Hey dude. You you out here talking about me? I'm like, hold on, bae. What'd you say? Hey, bow! 
Beep, 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 beep. Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would have happened immediately. If I'm on the phone with my woman and somebody coming over there getting in my business, butting in my conversation, accusing me of something that I know I ain't got nothing to do with, it's going to get met with immediate violence. Yeah, yeah. Now, y'all better hit that like button and stop playing games. Yeah. He got the white dude against the wall like this. Like, you better tell me right now. You better tell me right now, if you ain't the one that, if you ain't the one that been out here running your mouth about me, you better tell me who it is I'm about to, or I'm about to knock you out. He like, I heard it from them. I heard it from them. They said it. They, they was talking about it. He was pointing at this short dude named Ron. They was talking about it. He said, what? Hey, Ron, you out there spreading my business out? You over there talking down on me? You talking about me? You over here talking down on my name? You telling people to these whole ass niggas up in here? Ron like, hey, bro, chill, man. I didn't say nothing. I just heard it from so-and-so. He was just saying, man, call that. Why you going around put my name in your mouth? Yo, bro, chill. No, no, it ain't, no, it ain't no chill now. No, what's up? What's up? So he take off his shirt. Hey, mate, put the shirt back on. The deputies, they done watch, they watching this whole thing unfold. Now they want to say something. He done took his shirt off. What's up, Ron? What's up with it? So here you go. You know that, you know that shoulder. I told you about that shoulder. Here you go like that, right? Ron like, like, yo, it's like whatever. So they squaring off, right? So bam, boom, 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 right? So they going at it, like, so Ron, Ron hitting them with that. Boom, boom, boom. Leroy like. Bam, 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 right? So they just going at it like boom, boom, boom. Every fight scene. Boom, boom, boom. Right? So they in there fighting. Guards come in there. They break it up. They take him to the hole. They take him to the hole. So as they both are getting carted away to the hole, the conversations is going like, well, if he ain't got it, why he getting so mad for? Let me tell y'all something. When you locked up, rumors spread like wildfire. Even if it's not true, dudes want to believe a lie so bad over the truth. They want the lie over the truth any day. It ain't nothing but drama and entertainment up in there. And if somebody can jail off you or do they bid off you, they gonna do it. His bunkie wasn't there for this fight. His bunkie didn't see none of this go on. His bunkie worked in the warehouse. So when he got back, he heard about what happened. And he like, yo, y'all chill out, man. That's crazy. I, I should have been spoke up. That dude ain't got no damn HIV, man. His, 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 he was talking to his mama on the phone a while ago. He, and his mama told him that his wife was messing around with some dude that had HIV. And she ended up getting it. Dude was already in here. He ain't got that, man. He put his bunky business out there. But he thought that he was doing, he was fixing a problem. But he actually caused more harm than good by doing that. So dude in the hole, and he here like, yeah, your bunky the one put it out there. Drama. Straight up drama. They left out the part where he was clearing it up to clarify that dude didn't have it. Yeah, your bunky the one put it out there. Your bunky. He said that, now, now watch this. This is how messed up they is. They said, yeah. He said that you was on the phone with your mama. Your mama was telling you that your wife had HIV and she gave it to you while you was in here locked up. Like you got AIDS or HIV before you came in. And your mama was telling you that your wife was positive and that you got it. So they just added things to it. So now he like, yo. Oh, so it was my bunkie? And he know that he told his bunkie this story, but it got twisted. It's like the twisted, broken minds of these inmates. He like, all right, all right. As soon as I get out of here, as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to I'm going to put that pain to him. I'm going to push that So he back there abiding his time. He ain't telling nobody what he going to do. His bunkie has no idea that this word has went back to him. He got it out for him. So about a couple months go by, we all on the yard. I'm out there, you know, doing what I do, playing basketball. I see him come on the yard. He's standing there. And he just walking, walking like this. Now, it's hot outside. He got a jacket on. It's not really unusual when it's hot outside that somebody have a jacket on. Maybe two reasons why he got this jacket on. Because he's trying to lose weight. And when you put when you put extra clothes on, you sweat a lot. That could be a possibility that he's trying to sweat it out and lose weight. Or he concealing something. And, well, y'all guessed it. He concealing something. 
Oh, let me tell you, ask y'all a question. Do y'all think that his bunkie was wrong for clarifying it, even though it went the wrong way? To be honest, if this was if this was your cellmate for years, and your cellmate got jammed up and got sent to the hole on some BS off of a fight because these inmates can't stop running their damn mouths, and you come back in and find out that your celly got put in the hole for fighting over this matter, do you think it was his place to open his mouth? And I could be right or I could be wrong. There's no right or wrong answers. Just answer the questions. Was he in the right or wrong for clarifying what really happened? Let me know in the comment section. So I see him walking with the jacket on. And so I got the, you know, I'm dribbling the ball. And somebody stole the ball from me. They ran and they laid it up. My partner was like, yo, man, D, pay attention, man. I was like, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, look, 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 look. He said like, oh, bro, you out, man, what's up? He like, what you mean, what's up? He like, yo, ho, 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 hold on, bro, what, 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 what's up with you? He like, so you the one went around here telling people that my wife gave me a He like, bro, what? No, I didn't tell them. He said, no, I don't want to hear that. Come over here by the bench. We finna get this fade. You about to catch this fade. He like, are you serious, bro? He like, Man, bro, come over here and catch this fade. So it said, he like, look, I'm not about to fight you, man. I'm about to go home in a year, man. I'm not about to fight you. I'm, I'm not about to get rolled up, man. I was trying to clarify it because dude was out here. No, I'm, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm not trying to hear that. Come over here by this bench and catch this fade. He like, hey, bro, hey, you got it. I, I'm not fighting you. I'm not fighting you. I tried, I, I tried to have your back, man. Whatever you was told was twisted up. He like, you know what? Bow! Punched the right in the jar. Bam! Bow! His celly hit the floor. Boom! Hit the deck. Got the stump in the mouth. Boom! 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 This is why when I see him coming with that coat on, I'm like, oh man, it's, it's about to go down. Bow! So he like, boom! 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 Stumping him out. Dude blocking. Like, boom, boom. Trying to block the punches. He coming in with him. Bam, 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 bam. So he blocking the punches. Then he goes into his jacket. And what do he pull out? The banger. So as he hitting him, now he hitting him with the banger. Bam, bam. Now dude got his guards up, so he getting hit like in his forearms. He getting hit in his hand. Bow, bow. He done got caught right here on the cheek. Bow. So the guards come in with that mace. Oh. Oh, bow! Oh, the aggressor get maced. The victim get maced. Everybody, get down! Get down! Bow! Get down! So you know me, I get down like I supposed to do. I'm not trying to get maced. I ain't got nothing to do with this. So everybody get down. The CEOs they rush in. They grab the guys. Bow! Handcuff them and off to the hole they go. Bow! Y'all tell me, should he have minded his business? And I, I, I know in hindsight. Since we know the future of me telling this story, yes, he should have mind his business. However, should he have really mind his business? This is supposed to have been his guy. And when he tried to help, well, you see what happened. This is the Dante Show. Y'all hit that like button. I'm out. Yo, you got to get out of here. We know what you did to Pops. You set him up. You put that blade in there, didn't you? And that's why you sat back here and didn't go out. So the o the OG was like, fuck you mean get out of here with that? There's a difference between an OG, a convict. You can tell, you can look at certain dudes and you can tell by the way they walk, the way they move, they hold mannerism. It's, it's a lot of guys that I've been locked up with that I wouldn't cross. Because some of these dudes have been battle tested. At a drop of a dime, they could take your life just like that. OG was one of them type of dudes. As OG barking on him and he's somewhat trying to talk back to OG, he looking back like this at his homeboys. Like, y'all gonna back me up? Cause usually what they do is they get involved and they'll try to jump somebody. But they knew OG was about that. They knew OG, OG could use these, but OG would use that too. Yeah, OG would do that too. And they knew that. OG talking to him and he kind of somewhat talking back. He doing like this, looking like that. Trying to see if his homeboys going to bag him up. But they ain't backing him up at all. They like, they, they fade to black. They like, like they don't see what's going on. Right? Like they don't see what's, hey, it is what it is. Y'all hit that like button, right? So he like, whatever, man. So he go up to his cell. No, everybody on lockdown at, at this point in time. So now he just out there just talking. Man. Man, y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me fucked up. 
I y'all got me fucked up. I ain't, I ain't set him up, man. He got caught. He got busted. And I wish one of you motherfuckers would. I wish one of you niggas would up in this bitch. Do something about it. Do something about it. So there's about five guys in here that he basically called out. <laughs> like five of the OGs that um hang together that's about that. I'm just right here just looking up, like shaking my head like, he just don't know. He just don't know what was happen to him when them when them cell doors pop. It's somebody or a couple of them guys gonna come down there and do something bad to him. Might even take his take his life, right? And his blood homeboys don't want no no parts of it. No smoke. So he just popping off at the mouth. Yeah, fuck y'all, this, that. I'ma do this, I'ma do that. It's count time. After count, we can get out for a whole hour. Everybody's accounted for. Now, on this side of the block, my tier, second tier right here, but over on this side of the glass, you can see people coming out. And I'm like, why we ain't coming out? I'm like, yo, why, hey, pop the lights. Can we get out? We? They ain't saying nothing. Two things could be happening, maybe three. Either we about to have a shakedown, a surprise shakedown, or they about to do like a walkthrough. New prison guards might be coming through, or, um, yeah, like a shakedown, about to have a surprise shakedown. So I'm like, hmm, but the water wasn't turned off. So I'm like, okay, sure enough, five guards come in there with this big black band, right? So I'm like, what the hell going on? So they go up to his cell, put him in handcuffs, put all his stuff in the bed. As he walking out, he like, all right, y'all, I'll be back, man. It's some bullshit, man. They trying somebody, one of these rat motherfuckers snitched on me. Told on me, talking about, I don't want did that, man. Y'all some hoes up in here. So his homeboy's like, man, be up, man. We, we got you, man. We, we'll hold you down, all this and that, right? Some of the little blood homies is talking amongst each other. They're like, yeah, man, we know OG told. We know OG told, but they not really saying a lot because they know OG going to compress them, right? But it gets around that these little blood saying it, so... We had this one guard in there. He was he was okay. He was one of them guards that kept it real. He came there, did his job. If you didn't cause any trouble, he didn't really bother you at all, right? He he was a cool dip. I I'll tell you that. He just did his job. So one day he heard them talking amongst each other and it's about to really go down because OG now getting wind that they basically trying to say he got their the little homie out of there. As it's about to go down, the deputy I'm telling you about, he basically told them like, yo. Nobody didn't tell on him. He he wrote a note and got out of here and said he feared for his safety. He checked in. Checked in. Yeah, he checked in. The reason why I'm telling y'all this story, if you new to jail or prison and you never been in a gang and you really not a violent person, don't join no gang because you could get put in a situation so fast, so quick, that you not prepared for it. And it can turn out real bad, real bad. So when he checked in, they put him in a hole for a week. He went on the other side of the yard. He gets over there. Word get out like he's no good. It's a green light on him. They put him in a tank. It was maybe about five bloods, three vice lords, 20 regular people. <sighs> they played cool. He connected with his blood brothers. When he got in the cell with one of his blood brothers, three of them came up in there. And they smashed them out. Smashed them out. They beat that dude so bad. So bad. For checking in. For being a coward. You see my big nose? He got a big nose like mine. His nose was like psh, broken. Pushed that way. Eyes closed. His lip right here. You see that? This was split. Like open like a flap. Split. He had to get airlifted up out of there. They beat him bad. They didn't stab him. But they beat the hell out of them. So if you thinking about going to jail or prison and joining a gang and you not built like that, better listen to my words. Hit that like button. This is the Dante Show. And bless that cash app. I'm out. The Dante Show. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So I'm looking like, Ew, is he blushing? What is he saying to him to make this dude blush like that? Okay, booty bandits of doom. We're going to call this guy John Coffee. This guy was a very, very notorious booty bandit. And justice was served. I don't knock a man on how he programmed. You got guys that program by working out. 
You got guys like me staying out the way and only talk to a select few people. You got guys that like to extort people. You got guys that like other men indulge in them type of activities. I can't knock a man for how they program. John Coffey, again, was a notorious booty bandit. He was so on it. Every Tuesday, we'd get fresh new inmates that'd come in. He would be right there at that gate. When a bus pull up, he'd be right sizing everybody up, picking and choosing who his next victim is going to be. You see, John Coffey, he wasn't the type that whined and dined. He was like Fleece Johnson. Y'all remember Fleece Johnson? Yeah, that's Fleece Johnson. He was like a lion stalking his prey from the get-go. And you know who was on the menu? And I know it might seem like I keep going at the Pacific group, but it's just the truth, especially in Alabama. He liked it, the young white boys, his preference. So he'd be there at the gate eyeballing. You know, like when Jeepers Creepers was on the bus and he was looking at everybody, but he'd turn them out the way. Then the next person will, will come up and he'd tell him to get out the way. And then he'd let you know that who he wanted. That's what John Coffey was doing. Ugh. He eyed this guy. This was a guy, we're going to call him Billy. Billy was about 18 years old. But Billy was off his rocker, if you know what I mean. Billy had mental illness to the max. Billy should have not been locked up. Billy should have been in a mental ward. Billy was crazy. John Coffey said, that's me. He took a real interest into Billy. Billy looked at like the Home Alone kid. Uh, what's his name? Macaulay Calkin. That's his name? Yeah, I, yeah, that's his name. That, that's him. He took a real special interest into Billy to the point where he went to other bandits and was like, yo, that's me. Don't nobody mess with him. That's me. Yeah, they they were serious about their business. Some of them bandits will group up together and discuss like they the Legion of Doom. Like they the booty bandits of doom, right? <laughs> like the round table of bandits, politicking. So he was so serious about Billy that he told everybody, yo, don't touch him. Leave him alone. That's me or it's going to be problem. I think John Coffey was falling in love. <laughs> As true fashion form, how he does what he do, he stepped to him and he told him like, hey, I like you and I want you. And we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. Billy looked up at him and was like, however you want to do it. John Coffee mind, he thinking, oh, I guess it's the easy way. I don't know exactly what John Coffey said to him because he got the whisper in his ear, and Billy got the smiling, but he was turning red also. So I'm looking like, ew, is he blushing? What is he saying to him to make this dude blush like that? Okay, later on that day, we in the lunchroom. It was Burger and Friday. Everybody know when it's Burger and Friday? Mm. Just like when you locked up, there are special times and special moments that you cherish. Food is like one of the number one things that is a gift and a blessing. And when you get, when you used to eat and slop and thick bologna sandwiches, when you get burgers and fries, that's a blessing. When you locked up, man, it's a lot of things that we take for granted out here in the real world. It's a lot of things. But let's get back to the story. So we in the chow hall eating burgers and fries. You know, everybody doing what they do. The way this set up in here, you got the bandit sit over there, the blood sit right there, the crypt sit over there towards entrance, the whites sit towards the back, towards the middle right here. The neutrons, which I was, sit like kind of dead smack in the middle. The others, which is like Chinese people, Hawaiian pe people, Indian people, people, they sit over there. These tables are strategically set up a certain way. Certain organizations, their tables was lined up kind of against the wall so people will have their backs against the wall and then the people that are sitting in front of them will get the alert like there's something about to go down. Now, where I was sitting at, it was open season because we was like on a 360 clock. Of, I couldn't see, I only could see what's going on in front of me and on the side, but I could not see was going on in the back of me. So somebody could have came up behind me and did me dirty or anybody sitting at the neutron table. 
Well, we neutrals. We ain't got no issues or problems with people up in here. That's how the seat and arrangement was. Every time I went in there, my anxiety was high. You never know what's going on in another man's head. Billy comes in. Here go John Coffey right behind him. He, I'm talking about he was like a little school girl that walked right up behind him. It cut the line and got behind him. You know? He get behind him, and he like, hey, I got a seat for you over here, and this and that. So he flirting with him, messing with him. There's no other seats available. So he tell him to sit on his lap. And Billy look at him like, I'm not doing that. And he like, man, come on, man. Just, just go sit on my lap. Number one, we in a child hall. Don't nobody want to see that. Number two, that's against the rules. The guards would have said something to him, but I, I, don't, I don't know what John Coffey was on. He didn't sit with them, but he sat like in his own chair behind them, if that make any sense. Right after that, we all went to the yard. I don't know exactly what was going on between them two. The only reason why I know details about this story, John Coffey stayed two cells down from me. So I could hear things. They run in their mouth and they talk a lot so you could hear things. So let on that day, Billy ended up getting moved from um, his cell. Now, there's a big part that I forgot to mention to y'all. When Billy came in, John Coffey, he went to the Whites and told them, like, look, that's me right there. I want him. That's mine. And and in this place, the whites stick with the whites, the blacks stick with the blacks, the Mexicans stick with the Mexicans, the gang members, they do their thing, and so on and so forth. I don't know what he gave the whites to, you know, bag off. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure the whites probably even stepped to Billy, told him, like, yo, we here to protect you. I know they have to say something to him, I guess he probably said he good. Or, I don't know. I don't really know. But I'm, I'm, I can only imagine that's what happened, that the whites stepped to him. Your race usually look out for you, but I'm pretty sure John Coffey struck a deal or something with him. He ended up being in the cell, and I'm going to say for maybe two days, they was in there playing games, if you know what I mean. The third day, this one I know it got crazy. The third day... Now, I didn't see this. I only heard it. Third day, third night, I should say, John Coffey asked Billy to lick his lollipop. I, I guess this is where the mental state come in. When he went to do that, I guess Billy had a flashback of being, of being violated by his uncle. His uncle used to violate him when he was a child. In the most gruesome, nastiest way. He had a flashback. It's about to get dark real fast. He told him, lick the lollipop. As he doing that, he has a flashback. He bit down and wouldn't let go. He bit down. He bit down and wouldn't let go. All you hear is, oh, streaming, hollering. I'm talking about streaming. When he bit down and wouldn't let go, I can only imagine what was going on in that cell. He went eight bananas, screaming, hollering, trying to punch him up. Dude wouldn't let go. Billy would not let go. He wouldn't let go at all. No matter how hard he was hitting on him to get him off of him, it didn't, uh, it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. When I was... 16, my girlfriend, me and her was wrestling, and she need me. Like, boom! I said, oh! When I say that was the most extreme pain that I ever felt in my whole entire existence of living to be 16 years old, I fell to the ground and was in a fetal position, thumb in my mouth, just thinking, Lord, just take me now. I don't want to be here no more on this earth. Please. Now, I can only, I can't only imagine how John Coffey felt to have his um, thing basically about to be chewed off, ripped off. It came off. There was no, it supposed to be two guards. There was no guards in the pod with us. Where's the guards at? Where is the guard? Oh boy. So he and they're screaming, hollering, and eventually he passes out from blood loss. Because yes, Billy Ripped it off. Chewed it off. Ripped this man genital area off. John Coffey bled out. I will paint the scene of what, what I can only imagine. I can only hear. I couldn't see. But I can only imagine things squirting everywhere. Um, that's gruesome. Y'all hit that like button. You hear him say, help. Help. 
And then his voice getting more faint and faint and faint. So at this point, you know, usually people, if we hear a assault going down, sometimes we'll make noise and call for the guards. If a bandit is violating somebody that don't want to be violated, we'll all get on the door and start hollering and screaming and trying to cause a distraction. So that way, you know, the, the guards will come and help that person. But nobody felt sorry for John Coffey. He got what he deserved. So, yo, how, you see how I got the headphones on? I put my headphones on and I'm laying down. And I'm like, well, just to serve, that's what he get. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And if you want to indulge in certain behaviors, then, hey, it is what it is. I mean, God spares off. God spare us all because we sin daily. And his grace and mercy save us, right? But I guess grace and mercy time ran out on John Coffey because he wanted to put himself on individuals, paid the ultimate price. He, he eventually bled out and he became unalive. When the guards came, the account, all you heard was, Cold Blue, Cold Blue, get back, get back, cuff up, cuff up. Billy cuffed up and he took him out of there. It was rumored that John Coffey genital was out there on the tear. Shriveled up worm. Hey y'all, I'm out. Money rolls, cars and clothes. That's how all my partners roll. Inmate T.I. Let's get to it. You got this guy that I'm telling you, he could be T.I. Doffelganger. What is a Doffelganger? A Doffelganger is somebody that dang it looked like a spitting image of yourself. He was not the real Clifford Harris. If you go into your cell and you see a candy bar or a bag of chips on your bed and you know that you didn't put it there, do not touch it. We all heard about that, right? Well, this is what this story is about. When T.I. put a candy bar and two honey buns on my bed. It was a Sunday afternoon. I'm downstairs in the day room. I'm in there gambling. I'm down there playing tunk. I'm killing this dude. I'm up about 20 honey buns, 10 soups, 13 Mountain Dews. I'm up. T.I. comes over there. Hey, let me get in on that. I say, hold on, give me a minute. This dude I was playing with, I took everything from him. Go ahead and go get that. So he go upstairs, he go to his room, and he grab my merchandise. T.I. sits down, and man, him get to gambling. I'm cracking his head. I got 7s, 14s, 8s, 11s, yeah. I'm just dropping. I'm not even letting the game play out. So he's sitting there. He like, man, this dude killing. I'm going to say out of maybe 30 hands, he probably had maybe two of them. I'm going to drop him back, 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 back to back, back to back. I get him up to maybe about 10 soups, four Mountain Dews, a bag of Jolly Ranchers, 30 stamps. He already told me that he wasn't going to be able to pay immediately. He said I was going to have to wait till next Friday on commissary day. We already set that up. I also told him that since I have to wait, you was going to have to wait. So me and him just going back and forth now. I'm going back and forth. Now he winning. I'm making stupid bets. I'm doubling down on some of these bets and losing big. When you playing tough and you drop and you get caught, you got to play double. And he started catching me. He didn't win all his commissary back, but he won a big portion of it back. Now, man, he was gambling for maybe about two hours, nonstop. And before lockdown, his debt done got to maybe five honey buns, one Pepsi, a bag of Jolly Ranchers. So let's call it a night because I want to actually go to my room to make me a quick cook up before I have to lock down. Ramen noodles, beef jerky, hot Cheetos, and a couple other items. So I head to the microwave. Now the agreement was that I get paid on commissary day, but I see cats coming to him, giving him things. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to see if he just going to break me off because he got it. Now, y'all let me know if I'm in the wrong. Yeah, we agreed that I get paid on commissary day, but he got it now. Just like that Floyd Mayweather and 50 Cent situation. Where 50 was saying how Floyd owed him like 100000 and He was at his house in his closet. And he was like, well, you got the money right there. Let me get that. And Floyd was like, no, no, I'll give you 
the money later. And he like, yo, you got the money right there. And 50 said they got into a scuffle. So y'all let me know what's I wrong for what I was thinking. As always, hit that like button. I slide over there to T.I. and I'm like, yo, let me get some of that up off you. He like, what you, what you talking about, bro? I said, let me get some of them things up off you. And he like, no, 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 you gotta wait. You gotta wait till Thursday. So I'm like, Thursday? Why Thursday? We got it now. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, bro. We, I said, all right, man, whatever. You know, in hindsight, y'all, I think I was in the wrong. We agreed on a certain day. And just because I see him getting things in, that wasn't my business. But you know what? Y'all let me know in the comment section. Was I wrong? Was I wrong? Because if if I am wrong, I admit to my wrongs. I admit to it. All right, man, I, I'll take care of you Thursday. I said, but we get commissary on Friday. And he was like, no, I'm going to get some I items in. Um, I'm going to go collect on Thursday because, you know, the other pot, um, they get theirs. And I got a couple of homeboys that owe me. So I'm going to go over there on Thursday and grab that and then break you off. I walks off. I go back to the microwave and I commence to do my cook up. So I'm in my cell watching my little TV and I doze off and I go to bed. I got a bunkie. I'm at the bottom. He's at the top. This is how I program. When you use the bathroom in the cell, you do not pee. You do not pull your pants all the way down showing your ass. You turn to the left or turn to the right sideways. And then you get close to the toilet and pee. I got the bottom bunk. So I do not want to, if I have to wake up and see your ass in my face, there's going to be a problem immediately. I done told this cat twice already. We've been locked down together for two months now. I done told him twice already. He knew what it was. So it had to be maybe about two o'clock in the morning. I hear a move. See, I'm a light sleeper. When you locked up, you can't just doze off and just sleep. Be all dozy, right? Because the moment you get a good night's rest, it's over. Your cellmate could have been plotting on you for months. Revenge. Probably had a hit out on you or something. And he came to collect. And the moment you go to sleep, being all sleepy because you want to run around and play games all day in prison, it is what it is. This is prison. Hit that like button. By the way, let me tell y'all something. The reason why I tell y'all to hit that like button is so YouTube will see that y'all are feeling this video and then push it out. It's the algorithm, y'all. So just hit the like button one time. Because if you hit it two times, it'll like it and then it will dislike it. Hit it one time. And when I keep telling y'all to hit that like button, I'm only talking to the people that pull up, watch the video, and don't hit that like button. Y'all know who y'all is. Y'all the haters. Now hit that like button. So I look at him, I'm like, I say, yo, bro, man, didn't I tell you to stop peeing like that? Because his ass right there in my face. So he said, oh, bro, my bad. I said, I pushed him. I said, yo, bad, what you, I pushed him. So he like, bro, what's wrong with you? So he got to pee in that way towards the sink. I jump off the bed. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. For all you people out there be talking about, oh, Dante one in there putting him in. Let me tell y'all, man, I was around there. I was around there, 240, right? All must. So I pushed him. Boom. He fall forward. And he get to pee in right there by the sink. So now I'm even mad. So I get up, bow, bow. Giving him rib shots, baby. Right? I hit him with the beep, 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 Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. I'm working him out. Now, at this point in time, he's not fighting back. He like, bro, my bad. My, my bad, bro. Bro, my bad. My bad, bro. I hear a guard coming. At this time, now I'm just mad. Because he just woke me up out my sleep. Do ass all in my face. Guard come. Dante, cut that out. Open the cell. Open cell 19. Two guards come in there. And they grab me. So I'm in there touching them with the guards too. I'm, I slain one guard that way. And then the other guard like came to my waistline. I was about to hit him with the jackhammer with that. Bam, 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 right? But then I thought about it. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to get, I'm not about to get an assault on the officer charge up in here. And plus, when I go to the hole, they might try to starve me out. They might try to do me dirty back there, you know. They'll probably give you food that they done spit on, dropped on the floor, coughed on, put a booger in your food, all that. So you say, you know, I say, you know what? I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. And plus, it wasn't really that serious. So they grabbed me, they handcuffed me, and they cart me off to the hole. I'm in a hole for two months for this fight. The guard that I kind of slung that way, me and that guard never had problems. I was always respectful to this guard. So he was like, yeah, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, I know what you did and you didn't mean it. Plus, you a cool dude. I mean, what would y'all would have did if you wake up and there's an ass right in your face? 
what, what would y'all would have did? And plus, I warned him twice already. So the third time, he was asking for it. I'm in a hole doing my push-ups, doing my sit-ups, reading the books, getting my mind right. So I get let out. They put me back in the same unit. I forgot that T.I. owed I forgot about T.I. Talking to my bunkie. I said, yo, how long you been in here? He was like, oh, I've been here for two weeks now. I said, okay. I said, well, listen, this is our program. If you need personal time in the cell, let me know. If I need personal time in the cell, I'll let you know. Put the white sheet up so I know what you were here doing because I don't want to walk in here on no crazy stuff and then, man, you're going to have an issue. Don't touch none of my stuff. I won't touch none of your stuff. I don't play games with the punks in here. Don't have nobody in this cell or we going to have an issue if you go going if you got, if you want to have company, y'all gonna have to do that outside the cell because you know this both of our house. People that don't live here tend to like to disrespect other people's cribs. And plus, if somebody, if any of my items end up missing, you are here responsible. So let's just not even deal with that. We'll just take care of that all together. And have nobody in the cell. He like, I I got you, OG. I got you. Yeah, he was a cool dude. Shout out to Leon. At this time, when I came in there, I came in there with three other inmates. There was a particular inmate named Clayvon. Clayvon looked like he could be a linebacker. Dude was like 6'4", 390 pounds. Fat and muscle mix. The reason why I bring him up, because he is about to play a role in what's about to happen next. Two days later, downstairs gambling again. I'm at the poker table, so... You know how that is. So I owe like four suits. Ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. I got dang near about 50 suits upstairs in the bag. So I'm about to go get that right now. Because when I owe somebody, I like to just pay them immediately. That avoid problems. That avoid issues. That avoid dudes having resentment in their heart and their soul when they see you eating and you owe them. And they feel some type of way. So I go upstairs. And I go to my room, and there's some commissary on my bed. I know dang well. I know dang well. Nobody in here trying to try me. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Somebody really put some, trying to, trying to play games with me? So I'm sitting here like, Oh man, somebody, oh, somebody, oh, it's, I'm gonna go right back to the hole. This is why I told y'all about Clayvon, the dude that came in, a big dude. I'm thinking like, oh, it was him. So I go to my secret spot and I go get that blade. So I put it in my waistband and I go out. I'm looking down and I'm scanning the area looking for this cat. And I see him, I zero in on him. So he look at me like this and he got this confused look on his face. And I said, yep, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I got you. He get back watching TV. So I creep down the stairs and I start walking towards him. As I'm walking towards him, T.I. coming towards me. So I'm about to whip out. I'm like eight feet away from dude. T.I. like, hey, bro, you get that? I, I I put your stuff on the bed upstairs. I said, huh? He was like, yeah, yeah. You remember before you got, before you went to the hole? I, I owed you all your stuff upstairs. I put it upstairs when you was down here gambling. Yo, that was a close call. I was about to push this blade inside this man because I thought that he was trying to try me. All along, T.I. Money rolls, cars in clothes. That's how all my partners roll. T.I. put that on my bed. He owed me that from a month and some change ago. Two months and some change ago, my fault. T.I. owed me that. T.I. owed me that two months ago. And he came and broke bread. Here I go with my convict mind thinking somebody trying to play me somebody trying to really get at me oh no it was him the big dude that came in he did it because i know pretty much everybody else up in here and he knew and he looked like the type that are trying to push up on somebody well i was about to push that blade inside of him real fast good thing i didn't because i might not be talking to y'all right now i might be in a hole right now so he like yeah 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 i said oh i said hey man Thanks, bro. Thanks. He said, All right, I appreciate you. He walk off. I'm just like, dang, I feel so stupid now. So I turns around and I get to walking upstairs. I sit on my bed and I'm putting the commissary away. The dude that I owe the suits to, he comes to say, he's like, hey, hey, can I get that from you? I said, yeah, 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 hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. So I get up and I give him the stuff. He walks off. He come to big dude. He like, hey, bro, uh, what was that all about earlier when you, uh, 
was looking at me over the over the tear. What, what what was that about? No, I wasn't looking at you. I was looking past you. He was like, "No, man, I you you was looking at me." And then, you know, I just felt like, "Do, do we got an issue or anything?" I said, "No. Nah, if we had an issue, you would know we had an issue." At this point in time, I'm going in my waistband, and he sees it. I don't pull it all the way out, but I pulls it out enough for him to see it. So he like. Oh, 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 okay, I see, I see what's going on, man, no, no, man, it, it ain't nothing, it's just, I, I was just trying to check up on you and see what was going, see, let me tell y'all something, no matter how big you are, no matter how tough you are, don't nobody want to get stabbed, don't nobody want to get that blade put inside their body, I done been stabbed twice while locked up, and it ain't fun, it hurts like a mother, so his tune changed, when he seen me pulling out that blade, I told y'all I stayed with a bloody knife and wasn't afraid to use it. All through the pod, they knew I pushed that knife. That's the old me. The new me, I'm a God-fearing man that values every human being. He like, oh, no, bro, I was I was just seeing what was going on with you. That That's all. That, that's all, bro, but I, I'm going to holler at you later. Me and the guard that I told y'all about earlier that I used to draw pictures for his wife and he used to look out for me i asked him like yo what he in here for how long he got he was like oh man dude in here for child support man he ain't he ain't on nothing i said oh okay he was like why what's going on i said nothing I, i'm just trying to figure him out that's all so i'm like yeah he ain't no threat i'm, set, I'm telling myself like yeah he ain't no threat let me chill out yeah but that's the story man of m-a-t-i and how i almost crashed out over some honey buns and some soups put on my bed. If you haven't joined my page, if you are not a member to Lockdown 88, the Dante Show, make sure you become a member. Make sure you get you a badge. I go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Y'all make sure y'all be in the building. I'm out. The Dante Show. Ah! Boom! He stumbled like, <laughs> he supposed to be your spotter, but he's supposed to give you some common courtesy room. Standing right here with his nuts on top of your damn forehead. So he keep trying to see what he can get away with. Now, if you don't say nothing to him, he gonna keep pushing it. At this point, I'm sitting on my bed and I'm thinking to myself, how the hell did I get here? This cannot be my life. This cannot be my life. Why did I do that? To the right, a little bit to the left. There's the toilet. The toilet is attached to the sink. And then there's like this mirror that's over the sink. And the cell door is over here to the left. As I'm talking to myself, I see this figure emerge. And I look this way and I see a guy looking at me. And he just walks off. And I'm like, here we go. Man, what did this dude want? He walked past again. And he's standing at the door. And I said, can I help you with something? He was like, yeah, are you straight? Are you good? I said, yeah, I'm straight. I'm good. He was like, do you need anything? I'm like... What you mean? He was like, well, I know you just got in here. Commissary day is Friday. So I want to just make sure that you good. You know, us black dudes got to stick together in here. Hey, yo, I want to give a special shout out to all my members. Tyra Washington, Cecilia Smith, Aquata, Arpec 240, Doomer Meme, Reagan Shambly, Lisa Love, LeBret Change, and Eva Monroe. Those are the members that joined my page and been holding me down. I appreciate the love, y'all, to Tyra Washington, Martina Franklin, Eva Monroe, Francisca Brown, Jacinto Lefrivere, Michael Maserati, Craig Lewis, Mark Steven, Billie Jean Campbell, Super Chat, Sean Height. I want to thank all y'all for blessing the Cash App. And I want to give another special shout out to everybody that been hitting that like button. And I want to thank everybody that been blessing the Super Chat too. This is M.A. Sweet Low. I said, no, I'm good, man. I'm straight. He said, well, if you need anything, just holler at me. I'm sweet. I said, okay. So he walks off. As soon as he walks off, my celly, he said, yo, hey, what did he say to you? What what dude just say to you? He talking about if I need something, to holler at him. Feel about us black dudes need to stick together. He like, hey, bro, stay away from him. Stay away from him, man. He he bad news. He is bad news. He like young. He, he's a booty bandit. Stay away from him. Now, remember, y'all, I'm young at the time. I don't know what a booty bandit is. I said, a booty bandit? What's a booty bandit? He said, man, he, he like to rape boys. He like to rape men. You know, that that's what he do up here. I said, what? I said, dude, I just left. He was like, yeah. I said, mm. I said, all right. He said, actually, bro, if he approached you, he got you on his radar. And he might try to approach you again. 
Don't ever be alone with this dude. If he try to have you come to his cell, do not go to his cell. Do not take nothing from him. Nothing from him. He's going to let you run up a debt with him. And whether you got the money to pay it back or the commissary to pay it back, he's not going to accept that payment. He's going to want something else. This is how he get down. He box. And he like to, he train guys how to so-called box. And when you get real comfortable with him, he attach himself to young guys, the ones that he like. If they don't know how to box, He'll teach them how to box. They'll be in the cell, and he'll be teaching them things how to box. They'll be on the yard with him, and he'll be teaching them how to work out on the weights. But the thing about it is, you got to watch his mannerisms. If you on the weight pile, and you got somebody spotting you, dude don't need to have his nuts sitting on your head while you pushing the bar up. Tell that dude to bag up. Like, bag, hey, hey, could you bag up some? He'll do that. He'll keep pushing the line every time. So you on your back, like bench pressing. He supposed to be your spotter, but he's supposed to give you some common courtesy room. Standing right here with his nuts on top of your damn forehead. So he keep trying to see what he can get away with. Now, if you don't say nothing to him, he going to keep pushing it. Y'all might be on the basketball court, you know, hooping, right? Playing basketball. He might be overly checking you defensively. He might be all up on you, trying to get a feel on. If you don't say nothing to him, he going to keep doing it. He going to keep pushing that line. It'll be a situation where you talking to him and he looking at you like a man look at a woman. And you're like, I'm tripping. He might be saying things to you like, hey, babe, you tripping. Keep pushing that line. Hey, girl, you tripping. Real sly, real fast. If you don't check him, keep pushing that line. He going to keep doing things to push that line. If you keep rejecting his advances, then he going to get more aggressive with it. Meaning when you get in that cell and he trying to teach you how to box, since he want to play hard to get, I'm going to go in here and knock him out and then take what I want from him. He telling me everything about inmate Sweet Low. So this goes out to every new inmate that's out there that might find yourselves in prison and might run across a Sweet Low. Don't borrow. Don't accept nothing. Because sometimes when you trying to pay that person back, they don't want the commissary back. They want your manhood back. So me being a new inmate, I'm like, okay, so what should I do? Should I go tell? Should I tell a guard? He said, no, don't you ever go tell no guard on the inmate. You got to handle your business. Listen, that's a bad rep to have. You'll be labeled as a snitch. You will get beat up in here. You'll get extorted in here. Man, you'll have a hard time up here. You're going to have to take care of your business. Now, remember, y'all, I told y'all this was my first time being locked up. I didn't know no better. I wasn't no convict. I wasn't no hard and criminal, okay? So... I said, so what, well, what should I do? I mean, you're telling me to handle my business, but what is handling my business? Do I go up to him and, and try to hit him or beat him up? Fist to fist, hand to hand, there's no way I could beat this guy. This dude was three times bigger than me. You're not beating no grown for man unless you're a trained fighter. What should I do? I'm going to give you something and don't ever pull it out unless you're going to use it. So he walk over to the toilet and he pull out something. And I'm looking and it looked like a little knife. So he said, open your hand, man. So I opened my hand like this and he put it in my hand. I'm looking at it. He said, this is how you hold it. You hold it like this. You hold it tight, real tight. He said, which one is your strong hand? What's your strong hand? I said, my right. You hold this thing tight like your life depend on it. And you had this hand open. You can use your hand like this as a shield, but use this as your sword and go like this. This is how you do it. The proper way to hold this thing is like this, but it's easier to get them like that. So you hold it like that with a firm grip. So you're going to go on them like this at a motion like that. Somewhere up in here, you got to be ready. I knew how to fight, but I didn't know nothing about the knife play with my sword and shield. One, two, then bag up. He said, man, you know who you look like? You look like Ghost from Power. I said, word. He said, yeah, man, you really look like Ghost from Power. Let me know in the comment section. Do I look like Ghost from Power? He just giving me the rundown. He let me know who is who, where to go, where not to go, what phone I can use. Don't ever go to that shower. Don't ever look at nobody's cell. I was going to see it all. I was going to go through it all. He said, also, if you're a straight man and you end up getting a boy in your cell, you got to get out that cell or the boy got to get out that cell. I'm like, all right. So he giving me the game. It's breakfast time. I go downstairs and I'm sitting down. Today, they serving oatmeal, frozen apples, and two boiled eggs. So I get my tray and I go sit down. Sweet Low sit right next to me. I don't even notice that he's sitting right next to me. 
You know when you can feel somebody looking at you? I'm eating and I look over and he looking at me with dreamy eyes, googly eyes. And I'm like, I said, what's up, man? He said, oh, nothing. I was just saying, was you straight? Did you need anything? Hey, I got you two honey buns to go with your meal. His tray right here, my tray right here, there's a little space of table right here. He slapped two honey buns right there. I said, no, I'm straight, man. I pushed him back over to him. He said, why you acting like that, man? I told you, we got to look out for each other up here. I said, hey, man, listen, I don't know. I don't know what type of games you want or what you're trying to do. But listen, I already heard about you. I know how you be trying to press up on dudes and try to give give dudes gifts. <laughs> womanize dudes up in here and try to get with them. I'm not with that. He said, man, who told <laughs> you that? Man, which one of these just <laughs> told you that, man? I ain't like that, man. I'm not like that. I'm just trying to look out for you, homeboy. I said, hey, man, so now we getting loud. There's a deputy over there looking at us like, what's going on over there? People at the table looking at us like, so we going back and forth. He like, man, which one of these bitches up here told you that? Man, y'all some hate up here, man. I'm not trying to do nothing to this young dude, man. Y'all some whole Anybody can see me, whoever said that up in here. He like, see, that's why I'm be young niggas up in here. Every time somebody trying to do something nice for y'all, y'all want to act like, oh, y'all some I said, I ain't going to be too much of a, I ain't going to be too He like, well, what you want to do? When it's up, it's up. So I said, what, what's up? And he was like, y'all young niggas, y'all ain't about shit. So he got up, he picked his tray up. He turned his back. I said to myself, I got to get this dude right now. So I got my tray. When he turned his back, this is a warning to everybody out there that's listening. Never turn your back on somebody when you get done arguing with them or getting into a fight or altercation. This is why. When he got his tray and turned his back, I got up with my tray and was like, BAM! BOOM! He stumbled like, Poof. When he stumbled, I came down with the wrath of God like, BOOM! 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 The guard hit some button. It's like, eh, eh, eh. Everybody lie down, lie down, lie down. The guard boosts me to the floor. Stomping me out, punching on me, jacking me up, handcuff me, and they take me to the hole. If you get into a fight while locked up, if nobody got severely injured, nobody got stabbed, tooth knocked out, then you'll go back there for about a week. So I'm back there, and it spreads around that Dante knocked out Sweet Low. So everybody back there already know how Sweet Low get down. So, oh, oh, he tried to get you, huh? He tried to get you. They're like, so what happened? What happened? It ain't nothing but entertainment stories. Yeah, so he sat down, and he come giving me two honey buns. They're like, oh, oh, he tried to pull that. He tried to pull that on you. He tried to give you the honey buns fun trick and i just spashed out on him and then he kind of spashed out on me when he got up he turned his back so i got up and said bam blew his head off with, with the tray i blew his head off with the tray so they're like oh 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 man hey hey yeah man you stood up for yours yeah 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 that's what he get he always trying to play them type of games bam blew his head off Bam! Blew his head off. He always trying to push up on new inmates and play these booty games and shit. Yeah, yeah. You did right, cuz. You did right. So then another inmate was like, you know it ain't over with, right? And then you knocked him out in front of everybody? Yeah, dude, pride is hurt. He he gonna come at you. Try to come at me again. I'm gonna bust his brains out again with a tray. It is what it is. Dude was like, hey, you know how to fight? I said, yeah, I know how to fight. Dude know how to box too. Let's watch out for him. I'm thinking to myself like, yeah, yeah. When I get back to the pod, I'ma always have that you know what on me. So I end up getting released. I end up going back to the pod. Sweet Low was not there. I don't know where he at. So everybody like, hey, yeah, young blood, young blood, the older convicts. Young blood, man. Hey, man, that was some real shit, man, what you did, man. Hey, this, this, that, and that, you know, congratulating me, giving me that jail love. So I'm in there feeling like the top dog, the big dog, right? Somebody walked past and give me a letter. I'm reading it. And it says, I ain't forgot about you. And so I'm like, what? So I bought it up and I threw it on the floor. And I'm like, hey, man, who gave you this? He like, man, you know who gave that to you. I said, all right, whatever. I ain't tripping. Fast forward, I'm on the yard. I done got me a couple of homeboys in there off my clout. It's about four of us. This dude named Rock, JD, Fly City from Detroit. So we walk in the yard, walk in the yard. Hard for no reason. And so we all walk in the track. And I see Sweet Low over there, and he just standing there looking wild. So I'm looking at him, looking at me, and I'm like, man, dude better chill. I'm like, hey, y'all see, y'all see dude? 
They're like, yeah, man, why are you looking like that? Man, he might want to get his get back. Let Man, let's go holler. Let's go say something to him. I said, no, nah, let's just wait. Let's just wait till he say something to me. We done walked the track like three times now. And he said he's standing there looking crazy. So I'm like, I say, you know what? Forget it. Hand me that. So Rock hands me off one of these. I walk up to him. I'm like, I said, hey. He said, what's up? I said, yo. I said, yo, do we got a problem? He like, do you want a problem? So he stepped to me. Like, do you do you want a problem? So I backed out and I whipped it out. So I'm standing there with it like this. I said, what's up? He like, oh, oh, you, you think I'm scared of that? So Detroit like, yo, it's like whatever. Now my homeboys, they stepping up. And he, and he looking at us like, all right, all right, all right, I got you. I got y'all. So Fly C like, what? Boom! When he hit him, I hit him. Bam! So we jumped him on the yard. Boom, 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 bam, bam. Beep, 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 beep. Nickelodeon. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. But he's fighting back. He's a boxer, remember. But you ain't beating five dudes. We on him. Bam, bam, bam. He throwing him back. Boom, boom. He hit me a couple times, like right here in the head, like boom. Thanos, he Thanos, and we the Avengers. So we on him. Boom, boom. And he, he's dead. He fighting back too. But you ain't beating though. So everybody watching. Everybody looking over there. Everybody looking over there like, yo, what's going on? Oh, they, oh, oh, they over there getting it in. The guards is way over there. So they start running over there. They call it cold, but we still getting at them. So then two other dudes come out of nowhere. Like, boom, some dude, some big dude come out of nowhere. Like, boom, he laid me down. One punch. Bam, I fall to the ground. These are sweet low homeboys. So they came to his defense. Dude hit me like a Mack truck, like a semi truck going a million miles per hour. Bam, so I hit the flow. And he's standing on top of me like boom, boom. I'm 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 got my guards up like this on the dirt on the ground. Another guy come out of nowhere. And so it's two against four, sweet low, and whoever dude is. And then you got this big dude that's over me. So then the guards come, warning, warning, get down, get down. Right? Then they come over there with the canister, with that bear spray. Psst. Oh, everybody got the dispersing. Everybody got the running. Everybody got out the way. So I'm down here gagging, eyes all red, snot nosing, everything that comes with getting mace. I can't breathe. My lungs is on fire. So they handcuffed me. They handcuffed Sweet Low. They handcuffed all my homeboys. They handcuffed his two homies. And we all get walked off the yard. They put us in these cages. These cages ain't nothing but maybe five, five by... These cages is like dog cages. You can't even... If you tall, if you over six foot, you screwed. You screwed. If you over six feet, you screwed. You will be in there hunched over like this up in that up in that cage. So they had us up in there. And there was water hosing us down to get that mace off of us. Or that bear spray. Whatever that was. So they water hosing us down with this high pressure water hose. Felt like you was getting stabbed. Anybody that been maced before and had to take that shower, y'all know what I'm talking about. So now my body feel like I just got put in the tornado and shook around in a plastic bag and threw across the world. And I ain't gonna lie, dude hurt me bad. My body was in pain. The nurse come, she's like, are you all right? Are you hurting here? Are you hurting there? Body exam and everything. A couple of bruises right here. I thought my ribs was broke. They wasn't. You know, I got a couple knots on my head. One of my homeboys got his tooth knocked out, man. He got that front tooth knocked out. My bad. My bad, Rock. My bad, Rock. But, hey, this is prison, man. So, here I go. Back in the hole. Damn, man. You went out of here for two days. Now you back? Yeah, it went down. The guy that hit me was back there. So, man, him talking crap back and forth. I'm telling him, like, yeah, when I see you, it's up. It's up. So, man, him talking crap back and forth. That whole night, we just talking shit back and forth on the door. The next day, he like, are you with my homie, Sweet Low, is into it? I said, if that's your homeboy... I said, if that's your homeboy, you know why we into it. You already know. He was like, hey, bro, he ain't really even like that, man. These niggas, be, they be out here hating on him like that. Yeah, he do what he do, but he ain't really like that. I said, how you know he ain't like that? I said, listen, when I was sitting at that table, the way he was looking at me, he was looking at me like I was his damn girlfriend. He was like, yeah, I know dude kind of, he, 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 he like what he like, he do what he do, but... He ain't he ain't like that though. He ain't gonna be trying to knock dudes out and trying to rape them and stuff like that. It ain't like that. He usually go for the guys that's already gay up in here, man. So it ain't even really like that. And I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So as the time go on, so now man, him chopping it up every day. We talking, and all I'm thinking to myself is, 
Like, when I get out, I'm stabbing, dude. That's it. I already got my mind made up. Even though we conversating, even though we talking, even though it seems like we being cordial, the first time when I get a chance, I'm pushing that blade inside of him. I got to do 10 years up in here. And at this point, it's like, it is what it is. I got to make an example. Every time somebody see me, they going to be like, ah, nah, I ain't going to try him. Nah, he fight back. See, let me tell y'all something. This is the mind of a convict. This is the mind of a criminal. This is the mind of a bully. A bully will only go after somebody. See, a bully, a bully like to test the water. See who he can do it to and who he can't do it to. He feel like, well, I if I can go over here and extort and beat up this guy and he won't fight back, then I'm good. My work is done. That's the easy part. But I'm not finna go over there to Dante and try to beat him up or take something from him. Because he's going to fight back. And now that I know that he pushed that blade. Nah, i just go after somebody else. This is how these bullies' minds think. Me and him talking. And he like, he like, hey bro, I ain't going to lie. Why did you, why you jump in that, man? He like, so what you mean? That's my homie. I said, even though you know how he get down in here. He said, look, bro, I told you already that it ain't really like that. I mean, he do what he do. Why you keep bringing that up? I said, because I just don't, I don't get that, man. How could you ride for somebody that, that. <laughs> he like, hey, listen, I've been locked up for 15 years. Me and him, when I came in here, he looked out for me. You know, I had nobody. I lost my mama by being locked up. And he was the only person there to help me through it. We walked the yard together. He got me out of a lot of jams. I owe that man. So when I seen y'all over there jumping him, I said, oh, y'all got me And me and my man ran over there and you know. So I'm like, okay, I see, I see, I see what it is. And he said, yeah, I mean, I owe him. You know, that's my dude. He ended up leaving to go to court for whatever reason. So I'm back there. So I ended up getting out. I end up getting out the hole. And dude's like, hey man, did you, uh, dude's like, hey, is you Dante? So at this point, I'm ready to go. Thinking somebody trying to push up on me. So I'm like, yeah, why? What's up? They're like, oh no, I just wanted to holler at you. Somebody told me to give you something. And I said, what? He came with like a bag of ramen noodles, honey buns, and Reese cups. So I said, who is this from? He was like, this a peace tree. This a peace offering from Sweet Low. So then I'm like, Man, I don't want this. And then I thought about it. Well, I said to my, I said to my, I said to myself, like, you know what? This dude just don't quit. He just don't quit. So I'm like, all right. So I take the bag and I go to my cell. From that day on, I'm gonna say for about two months, I didn't have no problems. You know, it's it's, it's jail, it's prison. Back on the yard, I see Sweet Low. He walk up to me. I said, what's up? He said, you got that. I said, yeah, I got that. He said, yeah, that didn't come with nothing. That ain't that ain't no strange attacks, man. I said, all right. He said, we good? I said, yeah, we good. So he stuck his hand out like this. When he stuck his hand out like this, I went, I went into my waistband. And he said, bro, I told you I'm not on that no more. I said, I know. I said, we good. So he said, all right, all right, we good. Let me tell y'all something. Just because y'all buried a hatchet, don't ever, don't ever think that it's over. Dudes will probably lay on you for a whole year. Sweet Low had about 20 more years to go or 30 more years to go. Dudes will sit up there and play cool with you and act like the beef is over, feed you, pray with you. Act like y'all the best friends in the world. And all, the, all along, he just waiting to strike like a king cobra. If I would have shook his hand, he could have grabbed me close and hit me with the uh, uh. And I probably wouldn't be here today to talk to y'all. This is Lockdown 88. I'm out. Help, help. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Please, please help, help. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I'm, I'm sorry. That was the last words that I heard from Calvin. Let's get to it. When you grow up in the streets of Columbus, Ohio, and you don't have no strong father figure in your life, and your mother can only can do the best that she can do with you. Because truth be told, a woman can teach a boy certain things, but a woman can't teach a boy how to be a man. I know a lot of us grew up with just our mothers in the house because our daddies wasn't there for whatever reason. 
Some of our fathers walked out. Some of our fathers went to prison. Some of our fathers turned to drugs. Some of them is not here with us. They in the spiritual world. So I get it. Calvin would grow up to be running in the streets of Columbus, Ohio. Calvin kept him a gun and Calvin would use it if he had to. Well, the problem is Calvin, he was known for beating up guys. At this point, never used a gun. He had it. Oh, he had it. He always had it. But he always used his fists. To one day, he run, it, he run into one of his ops. You know, that's what the young the young crowd say now, ops. Back in our day, we used to say our enemies or, yeah, our enemies. But I guess it's called the ops now, right? Oh, yeah. Before I go on, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button. Now, let's get back to it. So now, Calvin ended up running to one of his ops at the gas station. He pulls up. He see he see his op right there in front of the in front of the gas station, so he like, oh yeah yeah yeah. So he he hop out. He said, yo what's up? His op like, man I ain't even known that today. I ain't even on that. He like what? You ain't on what? Pop pop pop. He get the bombing on him immediately. Calvin, uh uh uh. You know, dude trying to fight back, but Calvin like six three. Dude maybe like five eleven. Calvin whooping on him. Peek, 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 Nickelodeon. So he beating on him. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Dude like, man, chill. Chill, you got it. You got that. You got that. You got that. So Calvin whipped him out for maybe about, I'm going to say about 35 seconds. I don't know why this dude was Calvin Op. It was maybe some street stuff. I, who knows? You know, I, I didn't get all the details. So I don't really know exactly why these two was beefed out. So he said, you got that. You got that. Calvin like, yeah, I know I got that. I know I got that. Calvin commenced to go into the store. I don't know what he got in the store. This is what the CCV TV picked up. So they, you see Calvin enter in the store. He go grab from a bag of chips and he go get him a coat. He go to the register. Then you see a guy coming there with a gun like this. I don't know exactly what's being said. There's words that's changed and the gunfire erupt. Do, 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 do. Calvin take off running. Doom. He running through the store. Dude shoot and dude run out. Calvin, he's ducking, he's looking, waiting to the closest clear. So then he look, he he go to the door. He go, to, he look to the left, then he look to the right. He see the coast is clear. So he run out the store from the head to his car. Then he hear boom, 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 boom. So now he ducking. So now he got to get to his car to go get his hammer. So Calvin gets to the car. His windows getting shot out. Dude, dude, right. So now Calvin get a hit, hold of his grip, and he get the letting off. He don't see he don't see where the shots being fired at, where the direction it's being fired at. He just know he got his hammer and he got a bust back. So the car door is halfway open. He's just shooting like he's shooting indiscriminately now. He's shooting like this, like over the top, like pop, 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 pop. Not seeing where them bullets flying at. He end up hitting a woman that was carrying a child. She was pregnant. Six months pregnant, to be exact. He didn't know. That when he was engaged in this gun battle and he was shooting wildly, that he was going to hit somebody innocent? No, he didn't know that. You know, all he just, all he, he was just doing what he was doing, returning fire. Didn't know where the fire was coming from. But, hey, that's what happened. He ended up hitting a pregnant woman. So Calvin jumps, jumps in his car. Skrrr! He dips. He go to his apartment. Word is getting around. Yo, Calvin, Calvin killed La Latanja. Latanja. Latanja, baby daddy, is a real shot caller in the streets on the east side of Columbus. He got a lot of pool. He's a big drug dealer. At the time, at this time, Calvin didn't know what he have done. His phone get the ringing, blowing up. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Y'all. Hey, bro. You good? You good? I heard what happened. You good? Yeah, I'm good. You say, all right, all right. Then more conversations will come that will follow that will be, hey, bro, man. Hey, I don't know what's going on. But hey man, you did, did man you, you did you kill somebody? And he like nah, bro. I don't think so. I mean, and then he would go into the story of saying this and saying that. Like yo, I just went into the store. Some dude came in there and got the busting at me. I came back to my car. I got the busting back, and you know, and then I got up out of there. You know, now he hearing more and more that you know that he took out a girl pregnant woman so now he paranoid now every time he hear a car go by his apartment he looking out the window 
he's strapped up too. Keep that in mind too. Now he real annoyed because now he finding out like, yo, you shot the wrong, you shot a woman, a pregnant woman, and this woman that you shot is connected to the streets heavily, right? <sighs> so now he thinking like, all right, man, I got to get out of Columbus. I got to go. Unbeknownst to him, <clears throat> police is looking for him. Detectives, all this going on in 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 an hour, in a span of two hours, the police the the police is out there in, in heavy force, knocking on doors. He he only stay about three blocks away from this from the gas station where this happened at. So they out there in full force. They looking for him. The streets is now looking for him. Uh, baby daddy, the drug the drug guy from the east side, he put the word out. Fine, Calvin. I do not want the police getting a hold of Calvin. Find Calvin and bring him to me. Dead or alive. Right? I mean, just imagine. You 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 have a six-month-old child that's not born yet. And your baby mama is an innocent bystander. You ain't trying to hear none of that. You don't want, if you're a street guy, you don't want the police to obtain the suspect. You want to administer your own justice. Not only you took the life of my baby, my unborn child, but then you took the life of my baby mama or the girl that he was kicking with. I don't know, was she just a baby mama? I don't know, was, was she the girlfriend or none of that? But you took her life too. I don't want, I repeat, I do not want the authorities to take him in. Y'all dismissed. So it's goons out there looking for him. Goons putting the word out. Where Calvin at? Where Calvin at? They done shot up Calvin Mama House. They done shot up Calvin other baby mama house. Right? Calvin, one of Calvin cousins get jammed up, get knocked off in the alley. Some guys rolled up on his cousin, right? Snatched him up. Where, where Calvin at? Well, I don't know where Calvin at. Oh, a word? All right, well, watch this. Pop, 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 pop. Left one of his cousins in the alley. It was thick. It was serious. Calvin. Calvin opened up a can of worms. He opened up Pandora's box. You got not only. You got probably one of the dangerous men in Columbus, Ohio. Looking for you. Right? And his goonies. You got dang near half of Franklin County. Columbus PD looking for you too. The surprise fact is, I'm going to say about three hours to pass and the police have not knocked on his door. Nobody has knocked on his door yet. There's a couple people that know where Calvin live at, but you know, Calvin was the type of guy that didn't bring people to his house. Calvin wasn't the type of guy that brought people where he laid his head at, right? So Calvin is sitting here thinking, you know, he getting these phone calls, his mama calling him, baby, what did you do? Mama, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing, mama. They, they was trying to get me. They was trying to get me, mama. Oh, Calvin, Calvin, please, please take, be careful, Calvin. Just turn yourself in, Calvin. Where are you, baby? Calvin, I love you. I love you too, mama. But my, mama, I got to go. I got to go, man. I, I got to get my mind right, mama. Calvin, I love you, baby. I love you. Please be careful. Right? So, Calvin get off the phone. He got about $10,000 in cash. He get him a duffel bag. And he, his plan is to leave out of the city by sundown. When the sun's setting. To move around in the dark. But here's the thing. The police out there. But the police presence is going to die down. But the goons know that. This is the neighborhood that you be in. So they going to be out there too. And they going to be waiting for you Calvin. So Calvin. He just sitting there. He roll up a blunt. You know. He, you know. He's shaking like this. You know. Can't get a hold of it. And, you know. He do what he do. You know, he's trying to ease his mind. But he know he can't really go, you know, really get too um, relaxed because, you know, he got to stay on point. 
you know, he got the goons out there looking for him. You know, at, at a certain part of time, you know, he get a phone call from one of his homies and he like, yo, bro, um, listen, where you at? Calvin like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm around, man. What's up? He like, bro, I mean, but tell me where you at so I can come get you. Calvin like, nah, man, I, I, I don't really want nobody knowing where I'm at right now. It's bro like, Calvin, man, you know, I, I got you. You know, you, you know, we dogs, man. I, I got you. I'm going to hold you down, man. What's your plan? So Calvin get to telling him like, yo, man, I, um, I need to get up out of here, man. I'm going I'm to I'm head down to the A. I'm going to head down to Atlanta, man. And lay low down there till all this stuff die over. And he like, well, I mean, do you need a ride? Man, I, I can help you get down there. Unbeknownst to Calvin, the police is on that phone call too. Unbeknownst to Calvin, they're tracking him down. They're using them cell towers to track him down. So he on the phone, he, he, he steady talking to him and talking to him. Then the phone hangs up. Calvin like, hello? Hello? Now Calvin is real paranoid now. So Calvin like, that was weird, man. So Calvin calls him back. No answer. So Calvin like, man, is he trying to set me up? So now Calvin real, he like, okay, it's time to go. So it's Calvin getting his bags ready. About to head out the door. Boom! Front door blow in. Cologne PD! Cologne PD! Get down, get down, get down! They come in there thick, the guns out, all that. Get down, get down, get down. You know, they throw them up on the couch, rough them up. Y'all know, y'all know how them, y'all know how the police do it. Shout out to the police, y'all. So they roughing them up, you know, put cranking his arm all up and putting his arm behind his back all rough. You know, throw them handcuffs on. And they walk them out. At this point in time, a crowd done gathered. You got cats out there. Yeah, it's over for you, Calvin. It's over for you. You got the baby daddy out there just nuts. He like, he actually finally see Calvin and, yo, his homeboys. Let me go. Let me go. Yo, let me go. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to uh. die. It's, it's pandemonium mayhem out there, you know. The crowd pr pressing up against the police and all that. So, they get they end up getting Calvin. And um, put them in a patrol car. It's dudes just trying to get out. It's like a full blown riot that's going on out there right now. So, Calvin ended up getting, he go down there to Franklin County downtown. When he go in there, they instantly, instantly, instantly put him in a hole. Well, they don't have, they don't got, it's not the hole, but I just call it the hole because I don't know what else you want to call it. You go in this elevator and you go all the way down to the basement and they got like this green room and it's padded and they put you in there. If you're talking about, oh, you're going to commit suicide and all this type of stuff. They had to put um, Calvin up in there because when Calvin went into process, they processing him, man, you know, the usual action, um, Asking them questions, where do you live? Do you got medical issues and things like that? Whatever the case may be, um, do you think that are you gang affiliated? That's that's what that's what happened when you get in booking. So in booking, they had Calvin chained to um, he was chained to a bench. Some dude that was walking past that I guess that was cool with uh, the drug dealer out in the outside. He knew he knew who Calvin was and just laid into him. Bam, bam. Bam, Calvin couldn't do nothing. Calvin only had one free hand to block to block the punches. And the guards let it go down for like 10 seconds. There was literally a guard right there on the side of Calvin. And he let that go down. Then he carried up and bro broke it up and pushed dude against the wall. And another CO came over there and grabbed him. So they had to shoot him downstairs and put him and in, put him into the hole. So Calvin was sitting there looking crazy, like, man. There's mad, so not so. I mean, just imagine. You can only imagine, and th there's a lot of things that I'm skipping because if I don't like the the story, haven't even began yet. Believe it or not, this story right here haven't even started yet. I'm giving y'all the backstory of Calvin before we even get to yo. This is why. This is why I say for you young guys out there, man. That's out in the streets. One mistake. One mistake can cost you the rest of your life. You know, he could have left him alone. 
when 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 he pulled up at the gas station, when Calvin pulled up at the gas station, and he seen this op, he could have let it ride. But no, he got out the car and bombed the oh. That this reminds me of King Von. That's crazy. When King Von was when he was in Atlanta in a club, and somebody whispered in his ear and said, Yo, Quando Rondo outside. The King Von got up, went outside, and bombed on Quando. And then we know what happened next. Lil Tim up the pole and rest in peace, King Von. Same thing. Same scenario, right? He he could have let us out ride. He could have just went in the store, got his coat, got his bag of chips or whatever he was going to get, his Philly wraps or whatever he was going to go get. He could have let that ride, but he didn't. He decided to bomb on him. And dude came back in the store and got the bombing on him. Didn't hit him, right? Then he go outside and he get the busting back. He didn't hit his enemy. He he didn't hit his op. He hit he hit an innocent woman, a child that's no longer here. So he have to pay. All right, gotta pay. So he down there in the hole, that's going through it. He 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 worried about his mama because he know he know dude ain't gonna stop. Dude gonna try, if dude can't get you, I want y'all to listen to this. For, for all you cats out there that's tearing the streets up, that's on demon time, that got a mother out there, a father, brothers and sisters, cousins and stuff like that, baby mama's kids. There's some guys out here that because they can't get you, they'll go after your family. I remember this one time I had a homeboy named Homicide from Atlanta. I do not associate associate with this guy no longer. He is what you call the pure definition of a demon, a demon from the bottomless pits of hell. He had this he had beef with this dude named Sir. I don't know what the beef was about. I think it was even over a girl, right? The beef got so out of hand that you know it came from fist homicide. He was a fighter. He'd knock you out with one punch clean. He, he he was a boxer, right? Sir, he could fight too, but he wasn't messing with homicide. They went from fighting to shooting at each other, okay? Then it got to a point where I don't know what homicide was thinking. I don't know what was going on in his mind. Sir had a three-year-old daughter. I don't even really want to tell the story, but this I, I have to tell the story because it's young guys out here. That's out here committing these crimes. That's doing drug deals. You know, thinking it's cool to run off on a plug. You got people out here, right? Homicide walks up to him with the strap out. He say, what up? Sir, like, oh, oh, bro, you going to do this in front of my daughter? You going to do this in front of my daughter? He said, nah. He pointed the gun at the daughter. And well, I'm not even going to say what happened next. Just know, sir is still alive. And the daughter, rest in heaven. That's all I'm going to say about that. He figured, oh, I'll hurt you. I'll hurt you way worse than you can ever hurt me, boy. Yeah. His daughter isn't here. Sir daughter isn't here anymore. Homicide is doing three life sentences okay in the georgia correctional facility he ain't never getting out ever getting out i had to dissociate when i heard about this it i i said i was just with this dude two days ago two days ago me and this dude was at the gun range at the gun range and then two days later this is what you do why you there? Why, why? My question is why? Why? Why do people... It's almost Halloween time. And we watch Jason Voorhees. Halloween with Michael Myers. 
Freddy Cougar. It's real life. Freddy Cougars and Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees out here in this world. Y'all got to be careful. Be careful. Always stay on guard. One of my homies the other day told me like, man, why you always so paranoid, man? Why you always, always looking around? There's always, when you talk, you always looking around and, and just always, I said, because do you know where we at? We are in Chicago. Dude, you, he like, he like, man, chill, man. You always, you always tripping, man. Won't you, you always trying to act like this place. I said, dude, even though I don't be in Chicago a lot, I come to Chicago maybe four times out of the month, right? You never know where it could come from. Even though I don't got beef in the streets, even though I don't seek out problems and issues with people. I could be with the dude I was with. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to say the location. There's no E in Chicago, the South Side. Just because I'm standing with him, he could have beef with somebody. He could have did something crazy to somebody, and I don't even know. And he don't even tell me. And then somebody come up, come around the corner, and black, 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 black. And now y'all saying, rest in peace, Dante. It ain't no more lockdown 88. Y'all going to see me on the t-shirt and pour a little liquor out, right? Uh, and, and if y'all going to pour some liquor out, pour some Hennessy out for me, okay? Hit that like button. But let's get back to the story. So now he's sitting there. He's sitting there and all these thoughts going through his mind. And he's thinking like, man, I just, I just want to, I just want to die. It, it's too much. Imagine the whole weight of the world. It's on this guy's head. He thinking about his mama. He thinking about his two kids that's out there in the world, his baby mama. Yo, his 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 mind is going a hundred places, a hundred miles per hour everywhere. Everywhere. So he so he's sitting in there, right? The guards come in there. They like, are you ready? He go upstairs, right? They get back on the elevator. One of the guards, two guards, they get to, um, I want to say the bullpen floor, where you go into, after you get processed, no, let me back up. After you get processed, they put you in this holding tank. It's like a bench, and then it's a toilet right there, and it's a little space right here, and the door right there. And maybe five guys can fit in there. And they put him in the cell by himself, right? So he's sitting in there. They give him, they give him a, um, a bologna sandwich with two cookies and a pack of mustard, right? And a water bottle. So he's sitting there. He eat the sandwich slow. Because at, at that point, how can you eat? You got too much going on. Your stomach won't even hold it down. But he nibbling on it. One of the guards going there. They like, hey, you better get you a hold of a blade because when you about to go, you're going to need it. Talk about adding, adding, adding to the, adding to the problems that he already faced mentally, right? Now he's thinking like, he just feel defeated. Feeling of defeat, Right? Feeling of regret. So he's sitting in there. So then I I believe maybe I'ma say this this happened around. I'm thinking he's in there. He he got in the bull tank maybe around ten. And they move him around three o'clock in the morning. And put him on the floor. I'm not exactly sure. Remember, because I'm trying to remember, because when I was locked up in Franklin County, I know, okay, so you go to processing. After you go to processing, they put you in the bullpen, which he just came from. Then you go upstairs to a, a floor. I'm trying to think, but that's not even the main floor. It's like another holding tank with his bunk bags at like an open pod, kind of like that. But it's like, 
it's not open. It's like a 16 man sale. Like it's two, four, six. Yep. It's four bump bags over here and four bump bags over here. And there's a TV right there. There's a shower all the way in the back. So they take him there. So when he get in there, dude's looking at him. Some guy, some, it's like three or four guys up. And they looking at him as he's coming down the tier. And then most of the guys are asleep. So when he get in there, you know, he go in there. He, he jump on this bunk. He lay down. Ain't nobody really checking for him. They, people looking and like, oh, okay, there ain't nobody. Or, you know, I guess the word haven't hit that pot right there yet. So he thought. There was this fat dude, this big, fat, nasty dude, right? I don't even know his name. I, I remember the reason why I know this part, because this is when I was in there, right? I didn't even know who Calvin was. When Calvin came in there, I was dozing. So this is where the story starts, where my first um, recollections, I can tell y'all the story of what I seen. But that's going to be part two of this. This story right here is real. This story right here is raw. Okay. Y'all getting the first, the first hand, first hand of what I see. When Calvin came into that block, when we was at in the 16 man sale, this is what, like I said, I seen him coming down. I seen when they opened the gate and he came in there, he jumped on the top bunk. There was a fat dude that I just did not like you. Ugh. I'm not, hey, I'm not dissing the fat people at all, but this guy right here, he was just, he was just so uncomfortable to be around. He will always be farting. He'll always just, he wouldn't wash up. He was just one of them cats that just, that just, uh, just so uncomfortable to be around, man. But there will be a part two of the story of Calvin. All right. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Oh, it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. It's finna get real, real. All right. So, as always, I, and let me let me do a couple of shout outs right quick. I want to thank everybody that subscribed to my channel. Okay. I want to thank everybody that took the time to subscribe. Okay. I want to thank everybody that be hitting that like button. That right there showed me that y'all like the video and y'all feeling my content. Okay. I really want to shout out everybody. That be hitting the cash app up, okay? Because this is my job. And I only get paid when y'all pay me, okay? So I appreciate everybody, okay? That be blessing the cash app, okay? If you haven't joined to, be a, to become a member of Lockdown 88, make sure you join. It costs you $9.99, okay? When I go live every Monday and Tuesday at 7 o'clock, you get a badge assigned to your name. Also, I make I make movies also. I'm making a movie right now as we speak. I'm dropping it December 24th, okay? When you become a member, you get first access to watch my videos, okay? My home movies that I'm making, okay? So y'all be on the lookout for that too. Again, be on the lookout for part two. I'm out. The fat dude, he know who Calvin is. So he playing sleep. So Calvin land on his bed, like on his back. And when you locked up, you can't really sleep. You can only light sleep. Don't you ever. You might not wake up. You might just drift off into eternity. Because somebody done did something to you bad. That took you up out of this life. So never go to sleep. For all you new inmates. That's, that, that might find yourself in the county jail. Or in prison. Don't you ever go to sleep. Around these men that you do not know. There's some guys in there that might just want to take you up out of there just in the name of taking you up out of there. So Calvin is somewhat sleep. The fat dude. Fat dude right here. Bottom bunk. There's somebody right here. Middle bunk. And I'm on this side. So you can say I'm on the left side of the bottom. Calvin is in the middle at the top. Fat dude over here to the right at the bottom. So it's like like this way. That's how he that the fat dude. Can look at him diagonally and I can look at him this way. While locked up, don't you ever, don't ever sleep on your stomach. You would think that people would know that, but people don't know that. Don't you ever sleep on your stomach and I'm going to tell you why. 
If you sleep on your stomach, a guy, two guys can grab your legs, one leg here, one leg there, and they can put a towel on your neck and hold you down that way. And commence to beating the living crap. I, I done seen it before. I done seen where this guy, for no reason, these bullies that wanted, that wanted his phone time. What's phone time? When you get on the phone, talking to your loved ones, some guys that approach you say, yo, can you do a three-way for me? Can, 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 can you call? Can, can you have your people do a three-way for me? Call this person, call that. He refused it. So these two bullies, they got out of him at nighttime. He was sleeping on his stomach like a baby, sucking his thumb. He wasn't, he wasn't sucking his thumb. I'm just playing, y'all. Hit that like button. Dude was just laying on his stomach, sleeping real good. Next thing you know, one guy grabbed his legs, held him down. The other guy grabbed his, um, had his towel wrapped around his neck right there and held him down. And the third guy got the beat, you know, with soap in the sock. Boop, 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 boop. Dude was screaming, hollering, right? Where's the guards? Where's the guards? No guards, right? But this is why I tell y'all, don't sleep on your stomach. Let's get back to the story, though. Hit that like button. So, fat dude, get up. Um, Calvin is actually laying on his back. So good job, Calvin. So Calvin laying on, laying on his back, you know, dozing off. He had a long night, long day, right? Then dude, fat dude, grab him, boom, right? Grab him like up here, to his up top right here on the shirt, grab him and snatch. Now listen, you talking about six feet, six feet in the air, grab him. Slam him down. Boo! Everybody woke up. I'm like, what the? I'm looking. Everybody looking. Fat dude commenced to start hitting him, right? Remember I said Calvin, Calvin know how to fight. Calvin know how to use these, baby. But you talking about a fat 395 pound, maybe six foot big guy, fat guy, right? So he put his weight on time. Donkey Kong, yeah. Yeah, this for so and so. This for so and so, right? But Calvin ended up wiggling out of it. It got the beep, 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 beep. Calvin get the whip in the mouth, beating Fat Boy down. I'm talking about boom, bombing on him, right? So they fighting for well, Calvin's fighting now. At this point, Fat Boy bought up, and he, why he getting pounded out? So then the guards like, hey, hey, cut, stop that. Cut that out. Cut that out. They they opened the gate. He had to wait for backup to come. Three of them ran in there. They end up grabbing Calvin up off of him. They take Calvin somewhere. I don't know where Calvin's at. They take the fat dude out of there and put probably put him in a hole. Or probably put him downstairs in the board, um, the board tank. So at this point, everybody up and everybody like, like everybody hyped up. Everybody like, man, what happened, man? Man, what was, what was that all about? So then word got to spread enough, you know, why he did what he did. Um, and they like, word? Oh, heck, so, man. Man, if I would have known that. Dudes always be talking about what they would have did and how they would have did it. Hey, man, get out of here. You would you wouldn't have did nothing, dude. You went here for traffic tickets, knowing you about to go home in three or four days. You ain't about to crash out and get additional 30 or 40 days. Cut it out. Dudes, dudes be capping their butt off. Anyway. So, everybody up now, we are talking about it and, you know, discussing this case. And, you, and, you know, it's, I, I don't really know these cats at all. I don't, I don't know Columbus, Ohio politics. But the guy who, who, who um, baby mama and child got unalived by Calvin, I did know of him. I heard his name a couple of times. So, I knew that he was a serious cat out here. So, all I'm thinking is like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, that, oh, that's him. Oh, he did. Oh, oh, that's that's a tough one. He better get gripped up. He better get gripped up fast. So I wouldn't see Calvin for. Okay, so this was the time, y'all, when I told y'all that I caught them two bodies on that gun. This so this was me. This was that time with me facing that ten year bid. Okay. And for y'all that want to know, again, it first started off as second-degree murder. Then it went to manslaughter. 
Then it copped all the way down to felony possession, felony uh, possession of a possession of a weapon and the use of a felon. And then it got pleaded. Then that, it, that's what it got to. Okay, long story short. How I know y'all like man? No, he lying. He lying. He lying. Well, when you get the person who gun it actually was that came forward and said this is mine. He have nothing to do with it. But at this time, I had to plea out because if I would have went to trial and fought, oh, I probably would have lost. I was broke in them days. I couldn't afford no lawyer. So, yeah, I, if I would have fought that, I would have probably, we, we wouldn't be talking right now. I probably would be doing that 20 years right now, all right, or 25 years, okay? Y'all would not be hearing me tell these stories, these prison stories, these jail stories, right? I wouldn't be out here telling y'all to hit that like button if I would have fought that and went to trial. But I pleaded out, okay? Got my 10 years. Ended up doing two years. So I'm trying to figure out when did I run into Calvin again from that day where I seen them get through off that bump and then he put in that work on the fat dude. And I was happy he put in it because I did not like that fat dude. He was just so uncomfortable to be around. So, I'm going to say I didn't run into Calvin until I got to Greensfield Correctional Facility. So, I'm going to say this was, I don't know, maybe 2017? No, 16. No, hold up. 10 2014. It was 2014 or 2015, one of them. I end up in Greensfield Correctional Facility. Go through the process, you know. And I'm going to give y'all the process. Since y'all since y'all cats out there that have never been locked up before, this is what you got to look forward to. When you get when when you when you get your time, when the judge sentences you, you don't automatically get on a bus and go to prison. No. They could come that night. They could come the next day, they could come a week from now. They could come a month from now. They could come three months, and you could be still in that jail before they come get you. Prison is way better than the county jail. Anybody that been locked up, to all the felons that's in the comment section that ever been locked up before, let the people know that. You rather do your time in prison than in the county. You cannot, you, you can't, it's like you won't lock down 23 and 1. Shout out to my boy 23 and 1, Josh. Right? In the county, you damn near in their 24 lockdown, period. Um, in prison, you get you got the yard, you get the workout, um, you you can get a job, you can is you got a way more freedom. Even though that prison is is a is a messed up place, but I'd rather be in prison than in the county any given day. The food is way better. You get to have commissary. It's a lot of things. And I'm not trying to glorify. You don't want to go to prison or jail anyway. So let's let's get that straight. Let's get that straight off the top. So let's get back to the story. So uh, we I'm in process and you know the first thing they do when you get off that bus, you line up, you get the captain come out there, he get the gap and run in his mouth all up in your face, telling you what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. This is my house. You all ain't nothing but inmates. I'll run this, this, that, that, or this, whatever. Y'all go to the line. You got to strip butt, booty, asshole, naked, right? All of y'all get naked. Y'all got to get naked. They don't, they throw like this powder on you. I guess this powder is like for like, I honestly think it's for the white guys. And no disrespect to the white guys, but it's really for people that get lice and bed bugs, stuff like that. And we all know majority of white people get lice more than black people. So they throw this this um this powder concoction on you. And it's from head to toe. It's like a it's like yellow. So you get this um powder through on your naked body, and then y'all go to the showers. So you in the shower, you washing up. The 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 the, uh, the water is damn near cold, so it's not a comfortable wash at all. So you in there washing up, getting the stuff off all off of you or whatever. Then you get dressed. After you get dressed, 
you go into this hallway and you sit down, right? They give you, uh, they call your name, they give you your property, they give you uh, three shirts, three pairs of pants, the shower shoes, they give you this uh, off-brand toothpaste, uh, towels, you know, just regular basic necessities. So after you get these things, you go back and sit down, then a counselor calls you. The jail, the prison process when you first get there is so long, man. Somebody told me that was in the Army that been locked up. He said, man, this is just like basic training, man. When you go to the Army or the Marines, it's like the first week is just paperwork and just counseling and all this and that. So it ain't really nothing. So I'm just letting y'all know what you got to go through when you get locked up, like going to go do time in the penitentiary. So the war that, you know, I go through my process and everything, get classified. No, I'm not a gang member. No, I don't fear for my life. No, I don't, I don't believe I have any problems in here. This, that, whoop de whoop, right? So I end, up get, I end up going to my pod, right? I'm not going to say the pod because some, there are some things that's going on in that pod right now that I'm not going to mention that can get a lot of guys in trouble. You know, I got a lot of homies that's locked up still to this day, okay, that I'm not going to even tell you. I'm not telling you all the exact location. Just know it's Greenfields Correctional, Correctional Facility, okay? You got activities going on in there with the cell phones. You get caught with a cell phone that's five years off top. No, the uh, the captain, the warden, nobody want to hear. You get caught with a cell phone, it's a wrap. Why you say, man, but I see guys on TikTok all the time with um, cell phones. Well, tell y'all right now, I wouldn't be doing that. If you got a phone, you better keep that thing hidden. I won't be out there recording people because all they got, never mind, never mind. I'm saying too much. But anyway, so I ended up running into Calvin, okay? When I seen them, when I, when, when I seen Calvin for the first time, out in the county, I'm going to say Calvin weighed uh, maybe about 170, give or take. When I seen Calvin this time, Calvin was stacked. Calvin was big. Calvin got some weight on him. Calvin, he, he hasn't been pushing about, about 230, 235 muscle, okay? Uh, Calvin had a couple of scars on his face, so I know he been cut. I know he been he he been in, in, in battle, okay? <clears throat> so when I see them, I say, oh, okay. I mean, I didn't go up to him and say, oh, what up, Cal? What up, bro? I didn't even know him. You know, I just, I, you know, whatever. So I see Calvin, and he just looked like he, he bugged out. Like his eyes are like, he's just, just always on alert. So I'm like, <clears throat> okay, I guess that's what prison do to people, huh? Let me tell y'all something. When I got locked up, the only thing I feared was that if if I got maced, because I got asthma, if I got maced and I couldn't survive that mace, meaning if I if I would have suffocated, if a guard would have maced me and restrained me to a bed or a chair and put a spit back over my head, I seen that happen to somebody. I seen somebody die. That way, it was an unruly inmate that was giving the staff a problem. And what they do, they whipped him out, maced the heck out of him, put him in his chair, put a spit bag over his face. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. He shaking and stuff. They didn't pay no attention to him. That man died right there in that chair. And you know what they said? They 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 they, they just swept it under the rug. Swept it under the rug. There was no repercussions. They didn't get in trouble. I'm going to let y'all know right now. It's not the inmates that you should be afraid of. It's the guards. That's their house. They can set you up. They can plant a knife in your cell. They can hire um, guys in there to torture you, to beat you up, to probably take your manhood. These guards play for keeps, and they dirty. These, gu these guards are dirty. And um, a guy, I, I seen a guy that was barking on them, being very unruly, got whipped out, maced out, and murdered in a chair. No matter how you want to cut it, no, no matter how you want to look at it, they murdered that man. 
So that was the only thing that I fear. I didn't I didn't fear getting stabbed. I done been stabbed before. Y'all want to see it? Right there. See that? It went in right there. Bam. Been stabbed before. When I got stabbed, I didn't even know I was stabbed. Because I was getting it in on the yard. Getting it on on the yard, right? When you, we'll talk about that later. We, we'll, we, I'll give y'all some yard stories later. Let's get back to Calvin. So I see Calvin. Calvin over there looking bugged out. All right. And this is this is all of my first day too. But not not my first my first day being out in um GP. That's general population with all the inmates. Okay. So I see Calvin over there and I'm like, oh, okay. So then this one cat that I knew came, he was like, D, is that you? I said, Oh, what up, my N word? You know. We dapped up. You know what I mean? What you in here doing? What you doing in here? I said, man. He like, man, don't tell me you snitch. You snitch. You snitch, didn't you? He, he was a funny guy, like a funny guy like me. I said, no, nah, he got my paperwork. So he going through. He like, dang. And you have to please. Hold on. You got. Oh, oh, oh. So he, he knew what it was. He like, yeah, okay, yeah, just. Yeah, that's, that's a cold piece. But, you know, he said, well, shoot. I'm in here doing 15, dude. Shoot, I, I just got here a month ago. So, you know, we I'll show you around this, that, whoop de woo So he's showing me around. He showing me who cool, who not cool. If you went to um if you if 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 you need if you need like CDs, headphones, um just the story guide. The story guide to somebody that buy a whole bunch of commissary and just sit on it. And then when everybody run out of their commissary, they go to him and then you 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 get a let's say you go to him and say, yo, let me get a pack of noodles. On um, When comments every day coming back around, you got to get him two packs. So he basically double doubling his money. And then if he don't like you or whatever, he'll hit you over the head. And if you don't pay that debt, it's going to be trouble because he got a couple of goons out there that will run down on you and collect that debt for a fee, of course. So um, he just showed me around, showing me who is who. Stay away from that dude. Don't talk to that guy at all. You know, there's a there's a booty warrior right there. Do not talk to him. These are the games that he play. I'm gonna tell y'all about MA Sweet Low. I already did a video about MA Sweet Low, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole video, a whole series about MA Sweet Low in Greenfield Correctional Facility. Okay. So um I, I see when he 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 like um he like hey you know that dude Calvin? I said, yeah, I heard about it. He said, hey, it's 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 money on this head. And I'm thinking about collecting it. I said, what you mean collecting? He was like, man, hey, where it is, man, it's 50 racks on this head. And um, shoot, dudes know it. And I, I said, that's why he got them scars on his face and stuff? He was like, man, Cash be trying to get at this dude like every month, man. Like at least twice a month, somebody trying to take him out. And I'm thinking I've, I've been watching them for this month, for this whole month that I've been here. As soon as I got here, I've been on it, you know. I was like, hold on, you've been here for a month. And from the day you got in the process and intake, you had it on your mind that you trying to plot and to get it, to get out on Calvin? He was like, yeah, man, shh, keep it low, man. I said, well, hey, hey, the way Calvin looking, man, he, hey, he been battle tested, man. You don't have to come right. He was like... Yeah, but I was thinking, you want to get out on it too? I said, heck, heck, no. You crazy? Look, dude was kind of off. He was off his rocker, okay? Because first of all, I'm doing of what I I thought I was about to do the whole 10 years. Thank God I got out in two years, okay? But I'm like, if we, even if we, if we do this, and we trying to get here. See, I got up in here and I'm already trying to get put into some BS. I'm thinking to myself, like, if if we do this and we succeed and we get caught, and we will get caught, okay? My 10-year sentence is not finna turn into 40 years. My 10-year sentence is not about to turn into 80 years. My 10-year sentence is not about to turn into a life sentence. A lot of cats that go to prison... That's looking at two years, five years, ten years. They get involved in things that they should not get involved in. They end up stretching their time all the way out. Okay? 
I'm going to tell you all the thing before we get to the story again. These are the things that you should avoid while locked up. Do not gamble if you cannot cover that debt. If you don't got that debt upstairs covered, like if you gamble for like 10 soups and a couple of pops, you better have them, them 10 soups and a couple of pops upstairs. Because if you out there talk about, oh, I'm going to pay you when, when my girl send me the money and she don't send that money, you better hope dude is patient. You better hope dude ain't one of them guys that, that you only got one time that messed me over. And I'm setting an example. So do not gamble. Do not do not bet. Okay? Do not borrow. Do not borrow unless you can pay back. And don't be sitting up there for you young, young guys that be coming in there locked up that don't got nothing. Don't be taking nothing from nobody, okay? Because they might want something else from you that you don't want to give up, if you know what I mean. Um, case of point, inmate Sweet Low. Sweet Low will lend you some things. And when you try to pay him back, he like, uh-uh, I don't want that. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. And, and, and sometimes it get cold at night. And I need somebody to hold. So that might be your payment to sweet low. So you young inmates that don't know better, don't be taking nothing from nobody, man. Don't do that. Okay? Um, If you don't roll that way, stay away from the punks. Stay away from the boys. Okay? You say, punks, boys, what's that? Um, Stay away from the gay guys. Okay? Number one, if you're not gay, you shouldn't be around them. Um, conversate with them and stuff like that because another thing in prison, birds of a feather flock together. If guys see you out there hanging with the gay guys and you're not gay, they're going to automatically assume that you're gay. And some guys might try to punk you. Some guys might try to take things from you. So, you know, always watch your surroundings and be careful who you talk to. Now, I'm not saying you can't talk to the gays. I'm not saying you can't talk to the boys. I'm not saying that at all. But let business be business, all right? But if you roll that way, hey, do your thing, homeboy. I told y'all that all my videos, I can't tell an, another man how to program. Hey, is he going to listen to me or you not? The choice is yours, right? Like Fleece Johnson, the choice is yours, right? So, um, oh, have y'all heard about Fleece Johnson? I heard that he was out. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section if Fleece Johnson is, um, is released. So... Now you got, um, so I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm not finna, I'm not finna be involved in that, man. You, you crazy. He like, are you sure, man? Sure. I mean, hey, it's 50 racks, man. 25 for you. 25 for me. Sure. I'm in here. I'm, I'm like, nah, I'm straight. But anyway, um, I'm gonna holler at you in a minute. Yo, this is part two, okay? I want to appreciate everybody that hit... Oh, oh, don't worry, y'all. It's going to be a part... It's going to be a part three. Chill out. Chill out. It's going to be a part three, so chill out. Now, I need everybody... Well, I want to thank everybody who hit that like button. I want to, I want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel because you didn't have to, but I appreciate you. I appreciate for you taking the time out and subscribing, okay? I appreciate you for hitting that like button. I appreciate everybody that been blessing the cash app. I do, I do appreciate y'all for blessing that cash app. If you have not joined my page, make sure you join so you can get your badge, okay? So you can get first access for the for my movies that I'm dropping. First movie coming out December 24th, okay? I go live every day. Why did I say every day? I go live Monday, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m., okay? So if, you, if you're in Michigan, New York, right, 7 o'clock. So if you're in Cali, I think we three hours behind y'all. So it might be 4, 4 o'clock or 10 o'clock for y'all. I'm not sure. But I know 7 p.m., Detroit time, I go live, 7 p.m., okay? Um, Part three is coming up, y'all. And part three might be the last video. I'm going to talk about Calvin. So if y'all haven't hit that like button, hit that like button, and I'm out. The streets caught up with him. Full video. Hit that like button. Let's get to it. So I'm walking the track. Three bloods approach me. They like, yo, 
I heard you and Calvin is from the same city. I said, yeah, yeah, we from the same city, but I don't know him like that. They like, nah, nah, it ain't, it ain't that. It's just, we just want to know, like, do you know him, know him? I'm like, nah, I mean, I seen him around the way, but, you know, I don't know him personally. You know, man, he never um, exchanged words or anything like that. What's up? They like, well, you know it's a hit out on them for 50 bands, right? 50 racks. I said, yeah, I heard about that. They like, well, what's up? You you, you want to get out on it? I said, listen, one of my homeboys already approached me with that. Look, I'm trying to get in here, keep my head low, do my time, and get up out of here. I'm not with none of that. They like, come on, bro, man. Stop acting like that. Man, be, man, stop acting <laughs> I said, what? He said, I said, stop acting like I said, okay. Bop, popped off on him. Beep, 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 beep. Nickelodeon. Beep, beep, boom, 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 boom. Bam, wham. I stole off on the first blood. Bam, 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 bam. The second one tried to hit me with the right. Boom, he hit me, caught me like, uh. I came back with the left like, bam. Put him to bed. Put him to bed. The other blood, he looked at me, put his fist up. I could tell he really wasn't with it. I just barked on him like, man, what you gonna do? He basically cowered out and started backpedaling. Now I'm looking around because I'm seeing, you know, all the attention is coming, is looking this way. And I see some more bloods running down, coming down this way. It's about eight of them, so I, I get to running. I get to run. I'm like, yo, guard, guard, guard. Get down, get down. You know, they up there with the guns on the towers. Get down, get down. Everybody been locked up before. Y'all know what I'm talking about, where there's no warning shots. The only warning shot that you get is when you on your way. The bloods is maybe about 20 feet away from me. They getting down. I get down. Put your hands behind your head now. I put my hands behind my head. They pat me down, snatch me up. They, they I mean, they, I was the problem. So they walked me. And before all y'all, before all you and all you haters out there be talking about, oh, oh, Dante told he snitched. Let me tell y'all, I already put in my work. I already slept three of these cats already. I can't fight eight bloods. Come on, man. Y'all use y'all head. Y'all always talking about, oh, what you would have did in that situation. I was survived. I was known to put things to work and push that. <laughs> all right. So don't sit up there and tell me, oh, why, why you yell to the guard for help? What would y'all would have did? Some of these cats probably had a <laughs> stop playing these games. Talking about what y'all would have did and what y'all wasn't going to do. But I know one thing. Y'all better hit that like button and stop playing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to keep begging for these likes because y'all ain't hitting that like button. So it is what it is. If you not a member of Lockdown 88, y'all better join the page and stop playing. Let's go. They got me y'all jacked up, got me in handcuffs, walking me off the yard. When we get past the first door, they're like, man, what the heck going on? What what is you doing? What 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 what's the problem? I said, listen, I don't know what's going on. I just seen something pop off over there, and I seen a whole bunch of guys running over here towards me, and I I, I panicked. I didn't know what was going on. I did I I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to get assaulted. They like who who was the guys? I said I don't know. I just seen guys running over here towards me. I I didn't know. See, I had to play dumb because even though I was locked up and even though I just put hands on these three bloods and knew that they gang was on my ass, I couldn't tell on them. It's against the convict code to tell. I don't know who the guys was. I just seen a bunch of guys running over here towards me. I feared for my life. So I got to yelling, help, help. So, so they put me in this little cage. The cage was maybe about five by 10, a five by 10 cell type of cage thing. So they had me sitting in there and this cage is like two doors after you come from the yard. So as people coming in, they can see me in there in that cage. So some of the bloods that was that was running, that they got put down by the guard, they was walking in. They was doing stuff like this, like doing stuff like that, saying plat, plat, plat. And yeah, yeah, when we see you, this, that, you know, just popping off. So I got to popping off back out. I'm like, y'all ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to put y'all to bed like I did y'all homies. I'm going to put everybody to bed, right? So so they talking junk. I'm talking junk. The guard's like, shut up. They hit my cage with the knife stick. Boom, shut up. So I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking like, all right, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I just got here. Been here for four months now. I'm in tour with the Bloods now. It's up. It's up from here. I'm in tour with the Bloods now. Okay, because they wanted me to get out with them and try to set Calvin up. They wanted to collect on that 50 bands. They wanted me to be involved 
and getting Calvin hit up. I wasn't with it. I'm my own man. I do what I do. Ain't no man going to tell me how to program the way I want to program. Ain't nobody going to dictate to me how I program up in here. They let me out the cage and they take me directly to the counselor. There's a counselor in there and there's two guards in there. And they ask me like, what's going on? What happened? You know, you're not a troublemaker. What happened on the yard? And I'm like, ain't nothing happened on the yard. You know, I just panicked. I seen a couple of guys running my way and they was like, stop right there. You mean to tell me when we run these cameras back, we not going to see you putting hands and knocking out three inmates? Huh? Let me see your knuckles. I did like that. They see it was all scraped up. They say, yeah, so you want to tell us what really happened, huh? Are you a crip? You got any tattoos? I said, man, I ain't no crip, man. I don't bang, man. I said, I don't, I said, listen, when y'all told me to get down, that's how my knuckles got scuffed up when I hit the, when I hit the ground, man. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get hit with one of them bean bags. So they like, law, nah, nah, you, you, nah, don't make, we run that camera back. You get eight months in the hole, flat out. We run that camera back and we see you touch one of them gang members. You get in eight months in the hole. So you might want to come clean. I already knew that them cameras where I was at didn't work at all. So I'm like, all right, man, go ahead and lock me up. What do y'all, what do y'all want me to tell y'all? Y'all want me to tell y'all that I was out there fighting? No, I don't, I don't know how them, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So run the cameras back, lock me up. I don't know. So they looking at me like, Man, this dude. So they said, all right, get him out of here. So they actually put me in the hole for five days. Meanwhile, throughout the prison, word done went out. Oh, y'all heard about what Dante did to them three bloods? Now, ain't nobody really saying this real loud because the bloods was heavy on the compound. So ain't nobody really saying it loud, loud, because they don't want that static if it get back to the bloods. And the bloods might run down on that person that's spreading that. It makes me in there gossiping more than women. So you know it spread it out. Yeah, man, Dante knocked out about 15 bloods. I'm hearing stories where it was 20 on one. I was out there like Hercules, like boom, boom, swinging my mighty axe. Bill Goldberg and people. Dante, boy, people. Bill Goldberg and people. Stone Cold stunning dudes. Choke slamming guys, all oh, top of things, right? Furthest from the truth. The truth is, like I told y'all, I slept three of the bloods and I took off running when I see the whole gang of them on my ass. So I, I, hey, it is what it is. So that's the real truth. But you got cats out there running around just adding to the story. Now the bloods is like, we gotta get this dude ASAP. So they sent the kites out. They like, where he at? Cats was trying to get at me while I was in the hole. I remember when I went out, this guy tried to cut me in the hole. We supposed to be, it's supposed to be closed security. It's supposed to be a guard right here to your left and a guard right here to your right at all times when you outside of that cell, when you back there in the hole. So I, but here's the thing. You get out for one hour and you go to this wreck yard. It's like a little cage where the only thing, it's like cement walls, 15 feet walk up and all you can see is the sky. That's all you can see. And they let like five inmates at a time go out there. Well, there was a blood out there. He already got the kite to put that work in on me. Next thing you know, the blood dude come out there. And I know he blood. So he looking at me and I'm looking at him. And he whip out a blade. I don't even know how he got it. I'm thinking one of them guards gave it to him or something. This hand closed. I got this hand open, you know. So when he trying to swing it, I'm swatting at him and trying to hit him with the left, right? So me and him facing off. He got the blade. I'm looking at his, I'm looking at his, at his, at his shoulder, you know, cause you can always tell, you can always tell how a man going to throw that punch or swing. You got to look at that shoulder cause it go like that or go like that. So I'm watching him. He watching me. We about to tangle. We dancing, right? So he trying to, uh, and I'm, um, and I'm blocking it. So then he throw one, he, he nicked me like right here, nicked me right there. It ain't no scar there. So y'all can see. There ain't no scar right there, but he nicked me just a little bit like, boom, got up out of there. He went for it again. I came under, boom, 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 gave him a hook. Then I, beep, 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 Nickelodeon, right? Then I had him. He tried to rush me. At this point, the knife done flew over that way. Somebody ran over there and picked it up. So I had him down like this, like he was, he was trying to boost me at this, like pick me up off my feet. But I put my, my right back foot back. See, I'm a fighter. I am a certified fighter. So y'all fighters out there, take notes. When somebody trying to pick you up the, off your feet, put your right foot back, lean forward on them. So I lean forward on them. I got that jackhammer right there. And boom, 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 boom.
Boom! Fell flat. Boom! I got the commission. Bam! Bam! Get down, inmate! Get down! Boom! Boom! They shot me twice with that bean bag. Boom! Boom! Oh! I fell out. Bam! Hit the flow, man. You don't know pain until you get hit with one of them bean bags. You do not know pain until you get hit with one of them bean bags. I thank God it didn't hit me in the face and this beautiful chiseled face with my big nose. Right? So it's that. Bam! Bam! I just fall out. Boom! Hit the flow. I can't even breathe. I can't breathe. They rush in there. Do me dirty. Right? Bam! Bam! Cuff me up. They doing him dirty too. They doing that blood member, that blood dude dirty too. So they cut, they got the other guys up on the wall too, spreading them out. But I'm getting, they just mishandling. I'm talking about bending my arm in ways that an arm shouldn't be bent. So they get me out of there. They rushing me to the, uh, they rushing me to my cell and just opening and just throw me up in there like boom. Throw me up in there like. So I hit the wall like, man. So I'm like, you motherfuckers. Throw me up in there like I'm banging on the door. But I'm gonna I'll beat your opening door. Come back down here. It's up all this and that, right? Other guys that's on the door is banging. Boo, 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 boo. What happened? What happened? What happened? Throw me up in there like man. So word get around the compound. Oh, word got around the compound. Mission incomplete. It was no success trying to take out Dante, right? Meanwhile, throw me up in there like, meanwhile, somewhere else on the cow pound, Calvin ended up joining the Muslims. The Muslims, where we was at, they would accept you. As, as long as you take your Shahada and become Muslim, it doesn't matter if you was a It doesn't matter if you was a It don't matter if you was a junkie. It don't matter if you was the worst earth once you join them and you really really with them they accept you into their brotherhood and they feel like if Allah forgive you then they have no choice but to forgive you too so he joined them other cats that wanted to get at him it's like dang if we get at him that 50 bands is still in effect we gonna have to get at the muslims and how the structure of the power went there, the bloods had the numbers, but the Muslims was vicious. If it was time to get out, the Muslims was going to push that, oh, you can't that blade immediately. You didn't want to mess with the Muslims. And I'm going to keep it real. And for every jail dude that's locked up, it ain't no disrespect to the bloods at all. But y'all know that y'all got some fake dudes in there. Y'all know a lot of y'all guys is not about that action. Y'all know that. Y'all know when it comes to one-on-ones, they will not do it. They'll try to jump you because of the numbers. A lot of them dudes join the bloods for protection. And y'all know that I'm keeping it funky. Oh, you can't. And I'm not dissing the bloods. I'm going out to the dirty bloods because the fools that I laid out on that yard was dirty bloods. None of them wanted with me one-on-one. -on -one. And that's another story that I'm going to tell y'all when I was beefed out with the blood. Oh, you can't. Calvin joins the Muslims. He ain't getting no more static on the yard. That 50 bands is still in effect. He going to Jew my, he on this Muslim tip. He doing, he doing what he do. He praying. He doing all that. There's still guys out there that don't care about that. There's inmates that don't care about religion. There's inmates that don't care about their well-being. All they care about is themselves. They only care about today, right now. There was this guy. I'm going to call him Slime Ball. Slime Ball was the type that was real greasy. Greasy type of cat. The type of dude that you cannot trust you couldn't trust him as far as you can throw this dude. He was he was just so treacherous. He was grimy. He had set you up. He the type of dude, if he can't beat you, he would plant a shank in your cell and alert the deputies that you got something in your cell to get you up out of there. Just so he don't have to throw hands with you. That's how he was. He was the type of dude that would go to the store guy, run up a big tab, and then drop a kite on him saying that he got some illegal contraband or he doing some illegal activity to get him shut down. That's what type of slime ball this guy was. So when it came to that dollar, oh, he was with it. And he ain't cared that Calvin was with the Muslims. So here I go. Now it's time for me to get released. Now we finna go back on the other side of the compound. I'm in there maxed out, y'all. I'm in there working out, just doing push-ups, just doing sit-ups, just jogging around my cell, getting my upper and lower body strength on max mode. I finally get let out. Um, I have a whole bunch of homeboys that was Muslims, and they already put the word out. Even though he's not a Muslim, y'all can't touch him. 
If you touch Dante, then we gonna touch y'all. It's just gonna be a war. It, that's just what it's gonna be. Some of the bloods like, no, nah, man, we hear you. They was talking to the imam. The imam is like a pastor, a uh, Islam church, if that make any sense to y'all. So he's the one, it's like the guy that got the keys. He's the shot caller for the Muslims. He the one make all the decisions. So he the one vouching for me. He the one that's speaking for me, saying, if y'all touch him, it, it's up from here, okay? So the blood, one of the head bloods, I'm going to tell y'all what his name, his name was Big Five. Big Five was like the leader of the bloods on that compound. Big Five and the Imam having conversations. Big Five like, look, I respect that and all, but he going to have to run a fade with somebody because we just can't let that go. Our name is getting tarnished. They talk about this dude that knocked out 10, 10 of our people. They spread in this narrative that we saw. So they line that up with Dante. And so the Imam was like, well, I'll get back at you. We'll let you know something later on. They said, all right. Imam approached me. He like, listen, you know we ain't going to let nothing happen to you. But they want to run a fair one with you. I said, it ain't. It's nothing. I'm. Hey, this is what I do, baby. Is we just fighting or is knife play? What is it? So the Imam is cool with a lot of the guards because the Imam keep a lot of things under control. Even when other inmates is not affiliate with the Muslims be getting out of line, a lot of the guards go to the Imam and ask him, can he control situations before things explode? So he got a lot of pull. So he actually goes to one of the guards that work on the night shift and say, yo, I'm trying to conduct some business. This inmate and this inmate going to run a fair one. So this don't turn into something crazier. So as this going on, y'all remember the slime ball that I was telling y'all about? The greasy dude? He's plotting on Calvin. His, he always got an ear out in the prison. He always got an ear out in the prison. So he knows what's going on. So he figured, okay, all the bloods, all the Muslims is going to be over here. Dante and his blood going to be getting it on as they get it on. Let me see what Calvin going to be. That 50 bands is still in effect. I'm going to strike and get Calvin. See, Calvin used to stay back. Calvin really done got into his prayers. Now, y'all, what I'm about to say next is going to be real treacherous. Viewer discretion is advised. So fast forward it to midnight. Me and this big blood dude. I, I ain't going to lie, y'all. When he came in there and he took his shirt off, dude had muscles where muscles did not supposed to be at. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm getting my one-two on. Y'all know that shoulder rub. Y'all know that Y'all know that shoulder, right? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm getting that shoulder on, right? He facing me. I'm fighting him. I mean, he facing me. I'm facing him. He facing me. I'm facing him. You know, I throw a jab out there, you know, he go back, you know, it don't hit him. He throw one at me. So we we kind of doing some love taps, you know, some love taps. Then we just get it on. Boop, 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 boop. He catch me one. He catch me one way. Bam, bam. Mm. Bust my lip. Split my damn lip. I'm chase the blood. So I'm like, all right, that's nothing. So bam, bam, I come up out of boom, boom. It didn't phase. I'm like, damn, I'm hitting this dude as hard as I can. So he came up like, mm. boom, boom. I ain't going to lie. Y'all see my nose. This dude hit me so hard, my nose went this way, like, bam. Oh, my son, dude broke my nose. So I'm like, it's nothing. It's nothing some, I got blood coming down right here. Y'all remember Eddie um, off of life when Eddie was fighting Goldmark off of life? That's how it kind of was. Dude had way more size than me, and dude could really throw a punch. He he was throwing them haymakers. He was catching me with something. I couldn't really get out of it because we in this cell, and then you really can't got no room to move around. So you know, I'm doing the best I can to the point he just caught me with a uppercut. He hit me with a, oh, you kick, oh, you kick, boom. Right? I wasn't knocked out, but I was in a daze. When he hit me, I just fell back like, boom. Oh, you kick. The guy's grabbing me. They're like, yo, they shake me. They're like, man, Dante, beat his ass. Oh, you kick. Beat his ass. So I'm like, I feel like I just got hit with a, like, with a big boulder or something. So I'm like, I'm trying to shake it off. like. So then I realize, like, oh, shoot, I'm in a fight. So then I get back to it. Put a pause right there. Now we're going to go on the other side of the jail. So here go the slime bar. Calvin down there doing this a lot, right? He praying, doing what he do. He hear noise. So he, he look, he don't hear nothing. You would think when a man praying, when a man is pr let me tell y'all about prison, okay? You would think that when somebody's doing a very personal thing with God, that that should be sacred. This is the time, remember, we are in prison. That 50 bands is still in effect. This ain't the real world where where rules 
where rules and regulations is upheld? No. This is dog eat dog. This is the terror dome. Oh, you can't. So he's praying. He hears a noise. He look. He doesn't hear nobody or see nobody. So he go back to praying. Then he hear a footstep. Then he look again. And he like, is I'm tripping? Then he get to praying again. Then he look up. Slime ball right there with a the blade. Oh, you can't. Bam. Poked him up. He hit him right here. It came out right there. Ugh. So he's choking on his blood, right? Dude, run up out of there. The slime ball, run up out of there. Calvin choking. Calvin choking. Fast forward to where I'm at. Back at it again. Boom, 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 boom. I can't win. He got me. Got to the point where he, where he had me in the headlock like this. He had me in the headlock trying to tap me out. So at this point, I know how to get out of it. But at this, listen, man, we've been fighting for about five minutes, let alone 30 seconds of a fight. 30 People that actually fight, you know, even 30 seconds is too long. So I'm gassed out. He gassed out. Oh, you can't. He got me in a headlock, and I got my chin tucked like this because he's not about to choke me out. I know how to get out. So at this point, he's trying to choke me out, but I got my chin tucked so he can't get to my pipe to knock me out. So at this point, it's going on for about maybe about 50 seconds. So then now the Muslims breaking it up, and the bloods rush in, and we get separate, right? So they're like, y'all good? Y'all good? Y'all good? The Muslims... Telling the blush, y'all good, it's over, that's it, that's it, right? So the Imam and Big Five, they end up shaking heads, it's dead, right? Situation dead. So everybody leaving. Lock down, lock down, lock down, lock down, right? Everybody, what's going on? We thinking like, wait, I thought it was cool. We we already set this up, right? This this was this was already set up right here. So everybody going to get locked down. I go to where I'm going, everybody going to where they going. Next thing you know, you see all these security coming in. You see the medical staff coming in. They tell us to lock down, lock down. Everybody going to their cells. Then we see a whole bunch of blood. We see a whole bunch of blood. And, uh, yo, it just, it got real crazy. It got real hectic. We still didn't know what was going on. Calvin had a bunkie. And his bunkie, they, they, they grabbed him up out of there. They snatched him out of there. Because the first person they would think that his bunkie did this to him. Calvin didn't make it, y'all. He did not make it. They had to airlift him up out of there. And he died on the way to transport. So with that, everybody like, what the heck happened? A guard finally told somebody like, yo, Calvin got stabbed. Calvin got stabbed. Somebody hit him up. So the imam thinking like, who could have did this? Who who did that? Who did this? So everybody discussing like how did how did who did it? Every you know rumors circulating like maybe this fight was a setup. Oh, you kick for the play like the bloods was in on it. The Muslims was in on it. You know, fifty racks is fifty racks. Okay, but what they didn't know, the slime bar made that play. He was an opportunist, so he seen an opportunity. And he went for it, and he succeeded. After a while, you know, after everything settled down, um, the slime ball, you know, he around there doing what he do, being a slime primary guy. I don't know the details of how he got paid, or even if he got paid. I just know that the hit was put out on Calvin. It was executed by the slime ball under the guise of me and the blood fighting. Oh, you can't. And, um, that's it, man. The moral of this video right here is that you can make one mistake out here in this world. One mistake that'll cost you your life. It might don't cost you your life right then and there, but it could come years later. That action that you made out here on the streets years ago, months ago, it doesn't stop because you get locked up. Nah, sometimes it will follow you to prison. And well, Calvin gave his life to Allah, to Islam, and in the middle of him doing Salat, he lost his life. So let this serve as a warning for all you gangbangers, 
all you steppers out there, it is what it is. I'm out, y'all. That 50 bands is still in effect. Oh, you can't. Oh, you can't. That 50 bands is still in effect. Oh, you can't. The Dante Show. The Dante Show. Yo, yo, I got another jail story for y'all. Y'all ready for another jail story? We're going to talk about a guy named Tim that I ran into. So there was this guy named Tim. Tim charges was home, home burglary, right? He was breaking into houses. Tim was this young white dude. He was from Florida. And what Tim would do, he would meet girls, right? Well, adult women, like young women. And he would meet them at the club and stuff. Go home with them. And then, you know, they'd do what they do. And when the girl fall asleep, he is still all her stuff. So he been doing this for about a month or two. Or another thing he would do is if he can't clean the house out right then and there when the girl sleep, he would come back. Now, what happened was he ended up doing it, you know, the same routine, meet the chick. Then he uh then go to the to her house, mess around, she so go to sleep. Well, this time the girl wakes up. Like I guess she was a light sleeper or whatever the case may be. And according to him, he said that as he was taking her stuff, and I don't know why dudes just feel so comfortable telling me all their business. Now, let me tell y'all something. When you in jail, you ain't got no friends. You ain't got no friends at all. Stop telling people all your business. It's dudes. It's dudes that's in there locked up that would tell on you. Especially if you got an open case. There's guys in there that that will sit up there and take the information that you're giving them and go get a hold of a detective and tell them what's going on. Hold on. Oh, we back. My fault. So. Yeah, like I was saying, man, stop telling people to sit up there and get a hold of a detective and tell them everything, word for word, that came out your mouth. And now you're sitting there wondering why you got these charges you being, and you being convicted because you was out there running your mouth to people that you don't know at all. So now they got you in the situation. Well, you got your own self in the situation. Well, let's get back to the story. So he's sitting up here telling me all this and all that. I ain't tripping because I'm just sitting there on some petty stuff. I'm getting out regardless. So, you know, I ain't got no reason to, to tell on him at all. So he said this particular time, um, he do what he do. But old girl ended up catching him in an act. And she like, I guess he was going through her drawers. Because he seen like $300 in there or something rolled up or whatever the case might be. So he was going through her drawers and she caught him. She like, what are you doing? And he like, oh, oh, uh, I was just looking for a towel to wash my face. She was like, the towels ain't there. You know, the towels in the bathroom. And she was like, what are you doing? And he like, man, I'm looking for a towel. So they get to arguing back and forth. And she like, no, get out of my house. Get out of my house, you thief. Get out of my house. Now, he got the money in his pocket, right? And she like, yo, where's my money? And he like, what money? The money that was in this drawer. You know, he like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. She was like, dude, you was in this drawer. You got my money. Give me my money. And he like, man, girl, you tripping and all this and that. So he trying to leave out the house and she cussing at him, trying to hit him, trying to stop him. She like, yo, that's my rent money. That's a part of my rent money. So he said, man, I'm out, man, leave me alone. So she called the police on him. He leaves. Now, the area that he was at, if y'all know about this area, y'all know. He was in Flint Township. If y'all know about Flint, look, the police is different in different areas. You got Flint police, then you got Flint Township police. Two different whole departments. You do something in Flint Township, they coming. They coming fast right so he he and remember he on foot too i forgot to tell y'all he, he on foot so this woman uh, called the police they told them this guy done broke into her house beat her up stole her money all this man 
this this was maybe around four 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 thirty four o'clock four a.m. in the morning. Whole street lit up with cops on the next block. That's where they caught him at. Jumped out, put your hands up, freeze, freeze. Get out, get out, put your hands up. Put your hands on your back. You know, all that, the clown and, po the clown and pony show, right? So, they end up stretching him out, locking him up, and um, putting him in the back of the patrol car, and they take him around the corner to get um, identified. So she come out, she said, yeah, that's him, that's him. Found the money on him. He had the money in the sock. He gave her back the money. Took his ass down. Right? So now he in there with me. He he up in there with me now. And everybody else. And he telling me this story. And he like, yo, uh, how much time you think they going to give me? And I'm like, I mean, if do you got any like proof that the girl, because the girl was straight up said she didn't know who this dude was. He forced himself into the house, beat her up, robbed her the whole nine. And um, I'm like, do you got any proof that, you know, like that y'all was texting? Like, you, you gonna have to go to that club and um, get cameras, you know, ask them to show that footage of, you know, of y'all being in there, you know, if y'all's in the club, then they should have the footage of y'all being in there together and y'all leaving out together, right? He said, yeah, you right. But listen, the way he said it, though, the way he said, yeah, you right, it was like, he like, dang. The reason why I'm telling y'all this in that way is because Dude was lying. Dude was lying. He was telling the police the same story that he told me of how they met in the club and stuff. So, y'all see where I'm going with this? If y'all was in the club together, right, then they should have footage. That club should show y'all in there hugged up and booed up, right? We going to fast forward two weeks later. So my homeboy ended up going to court with him. He come back, he like, he like, yo, you know Tim? I said, yeah, what, what's up with Tim? Didn't he have court today? He said, yeah. He said, dude was lying. You remember how he said he met old girl in the club? I said, yeah. He was like, nah. Dude was a serial rapist. Tim was a serial rapist. Tim will follow girls from the club or whatever the case may be and bust in their house while they intoxicated and drunk out of their mind and, you know, do that foul, foul act. And he'll rob them also. It was over 11 women that he done did this to that showed up to court to testify against them. All this time, I'm thinking like, all this time, I mean, because, dude, Tim was, he didn't even seem like that type. And that's why I said, you know, y'all got to be careful. Y'all got to be careful, man, with, um, all because somebody don't look like the type, that people out here weird, crazy, right? Trust nobody. Nobody. All this time I'm thinking that this that that it was just a one night stand that went wrong. No. Nah. This dude was a was a serial rapist. And that that was his MO. Following women from the club, forcing himself in, doing a vile act, and then robbing them. It's just this time he got caught. I mean, Tim will go on. Tim will go on to get sentenced. Tim was offered 10 to 18 years in prison in the state penitentiary. That was the deal that the prosecutor was going to give him. 
right? Because they had him dead to rights. For some reason, Tim thought that taking it to trial, because he didn't want to do, he didn't want to do that time. Hold on. Yeah, people just keep on interrupting me, man. So, um, yeah. So he thought that he could take it to trial and win. But all these eyewitnesses, all this DNA evidence against him. You know what they you know what the judge ended up giving him? Y'all ready? The judge cooked him. Cooked his boots. Smoked him. Gave that man 65 years. Yeah. 65 years. He won't get out. He might die in there, actually. He might die in there. But if he just so happened to survive, dude ain't getting out till he about 88, 90 years old. He'll be locked up. He'll be behind the walls longer than he have been outside in the free world. My nose itchy, y'all. So, my thing is this, y'all. Be careful, especially you women out there. You women, be careful, man. I know a lot of you women like to go out and party, and that's cool. That's cool. But y'all be, y'all be aware of y'all surroundings. If you a single woman out there, and you go into these bars and clubs, don't drink. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But I'm trying to tell you what to do. Bring somebody along with you. Bring a friend that'll make sure that you'll get home safely. Because there are predators out there like Tim. And thank God Tim got caught. Because you never know how many women he done did this to. But thank God for all the women that came forward. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all share this video. This is The Dante Show. I'm out. The Dante Show. Terry ended him in a bad way. So, in prison, right, you can't smoke in there. And I believe in most of the jails, you can't smoke neither. So whenever you can, get a cigarette. That's what it is. It would just do, right? He'd go around. We're just going to name him Terry right terry will go around and he'll pick up the cigarette butts off the ground right when the co be smoking one and this is this was the crazy thing though they would say no inmates could smoke and the guards can't smoke neither if the guards don't smoke they got to do it either in a break room or like 50 yards off the premises of the jail but y'all know how it is y'all know how it goes down in the yards so every time a co smokes he flick the butt there go terry Come right up to it, pick it up, right, hit it. That's what Terry used to do. That that was Terry's thing, right? So Terry one day that's on the yard, everybody know this is what Terry does, right? So I seen the, a group of dudes, right? A group of dudes was watching Terry. And I guess one of them, he was known to play too much. He, he always was playing. He Every time you see him, he run around playing with people cracking jokes just i don't know he he just played too much right make sure you know he he with the he with two other dudes and i hear him he like yeah watch this i finna mess with terry i'm about to mess with terry so the ceo smoking flick it make sure you know he could terry about to come over there the dude that played too much hurry up and run over there right and step he trying to step on a cigarette but he step on Terry here. Now let me paint the picture for y'all. Terry, every bit of 61, 62 years old, white male, old kind of frail type of guy, right? And this dude that play too much, he is Latino, right? And he like maybe five eight, one forty, right? So he basically playing with Terry, like stumping at his hand while Terry trying to get the um cigarette the roach whatever you want to call it 
he ended up stepping on Terry's hand. And Terry, it's like when he did it, it sounded like a piece of paper tearing. It was like, shh, like, shh. And I don't know, maybe Terry, basically his hand, like right here, his skin, like kind of ripped, like, shh. I don't know what, I don't know, but I heard it. Now, um, Terry was like, ah, oh, ow. Oh. Oh, so he just started running around, like running, like in a circle, like, ah, ah, my hand. And at this time, Latino dude, like, man, chill, chill, man, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. So he getting attention to the guards and stuff, and they like, yo, what's going on over there? What's going on over there? And he like, ah, my hand, my hand, my hand, right? So the Latino dude, like, Terry, chill, man, chill, chill. I was just playing, I was just playing. So um, Terry just walking off. He, go, he going over there towards the door to go in. So he go over there with his hand bleeding and stuff. The CEO like, yo, what happened to you? He was like, I hurt myself over there. I hurt myself. I cut myself on the bench, right? And um, he, the CEO standing there like, yeah, okay, really? What happened to you? And he was like, oh, man, I, I cut myself. So he was like, all right, let's go. So he brought him on in there. Keep that in mind. Now let's go over there to the Latino dude. So some dude, some other cats was coming up to him like, yo, you play too much, man. You need to chill out. You need to chill. Stop. Stop. Why you do that to Terry? And he like, no, nah, man, y'all chill. I was just playing when I was just playing. And so, and one guy, I'm going to call him Red. Red, like, that's your problem, man. You play too much, man. That's all you do is run around here playing. Why did, why did you do that to him, man? So he barking on him. He barking on him. He like all up in his face like, yo, you need to chill out. Stop playing. I wish you would have done that to me. I wish you would have done that to me. I would have beat your ass out here, right? So he like, man, chill. Latino dude like, man, chill, man. Just chill out, man. Bagging off, bagging off like this. So next thing you know, there's an airplane coming right here. Next, y'all hit that like button and share this video. So next thing you know, he like, uh, he like, okay. So he, the Latino dude just bagging off, just bagging off, right? He bagging away from him. So he like, all right, man, whatever. So he leaves and he like, uh, go basically by himself over there towards like with the guard door. Cause yo, it's, it was about to get heated. Cause I'm a red, red was a big dude. Red was like six, three, like athletic built and red played basketball. So red would have just, you know, it is what it is. Y'all hit that like button in this video. So next thing you know, um, oh, check this out. In my bio, if y'all feeling my videos and if y'all want to, hit that cash app up. Put a dollar in there, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars. I'm gonna keep making these videos for y'all, but y'all can show y'all appreciation. But if y'all don't want to show y'all appreciate with the cash app, at least hit that like button and share the video. That's the, the least thing y'all can do. So it's time for us to go back in, right? Go in for count. We go in. He already gone. He the first one in there. Boom, boom, boom. Now. Terry is not in our pod, but the Latino dude is. And Red, he in a whole nother section. So forget about Red. Red is not even in this no more. But um, so Latino dude coming there, he ain't really said nothing. We do the count, whatever. Now we got an hour. That's the dude we want to do. Hear me go. I'm on the phone talking to my girl. Like there's people in the scene just talking to my girl. Next thing you know, uh, Terry ends up in there. I'm like, huh, Terry doing in there? So when I see Terry, he got a bandage, like his his hand is wrapped up with his hand wrapped up, and I'm like, that's odd. Well, he must have snuck over here. I don't know, whatever. So I'm studying on the phone, and I see um the Latino dude. He's sitting there, watching um Three's Company. Take a knock at my door. We've been waiting on you. That song, that old show. So then. He's sitting up there watching Three's Company. So he's sitting like this, right, watching TV. And I'm, like, over there on the phone talking to my girl that's watching. And everybody just doing what they do. Yo, um, viewer discretion advised. He walks over there, right? Dude just right there looking at the TV. Ain't paying oblivious to everything. Terry goes over there, 
was over there in that bend that's right he had a um hold up he had a um a little razor about this thick well about that long he had a cuff in his bandages get over there dude sitting down there he get right behind him Latino dude look up it's too late the blade already out he put that right there cut him from here to here open it up when dude looked up Terry grabbed him up, lifted his face up a little bit and cut him from here to here opened all that up he jumped up. Ah, ah! Here go Terry, trying to chase him, chase, trying to chase him behind him with the knife, with the with the shank. Dude, like ah, ah, ah! Screaming, hollering, running around. They kind of running in circles. The dip jump up. Lock down, lock down. Everybody, go to your cells. Go to your cells. You know me. I'm out. I'm baby. I love you. I'll call you back. I dip to my cell. Cause if you don't, if you into your cell, when a goon squad come in, you about to get your head cracked. You about to get your head busted. And hey, I call you back, baby. Love you. Hung up the phone. Now went to my cell. So blood going over here, blood going over there. People like yo, what's going on? People backing up, getting in their cells. We all watching. Um, the deputy ain't doing nothing. He just wa wait for backup to come. Um, he stabbed him maybe one or two times, like maybe right here on the side and like probably right here. But, um, the goon squad come in there, put it down, put it down. Terry drops the knife to get down, put his hands behind his back. You know, the goon squad, I'm going to let that go down easy. So they rushed Terry, put him down, put, pushed him down, put the knee to him, put their hands and feet on him. Um, the Latino dude, he's sitting there. They had to hit, they had to cuff him up too, and man, like I said, it was just so gruesome and nasty, man. But the point of this, y'all, he should have left Terry alone. He should have left him alone. Y'all hit that like button, hit that follow button. I'm out. Karma came for him 15 years later. So look, all I hear is, "Come on, man, we men, we ain't gotta do this. It's like that, man. We ain't gotta do this." Man, come on, man. We ain't got to do this, man. We men. For you dudes out there that think that you're going to come to jail with your chest out and thinking that you're going to come Karma's and change a bitch. all the politics and what goes on, sadly mistaken. I haven't dropped a video in a while because a lot of y'all had a lot of things to say right about my video getting turned out about that video y'all in for it y'all are in for it here's the story here's the story of what happened to james woods see i made that name up james woods because the real person that this happened to i don't want his name out there why because no man should ever have to go through what he had to go through right so check it out, y'all. James Woods, he came onto the tier, right? I'm looking at James Wood. I'm like, cause, cause you know, when every time somebody new pull up, you know, everybody sizing them up, checking them out, making sure, um, you know, do I know him? Do I don't know him? Is he a gorilla? You know, is he a force to be reckoned with? So I see James Wood. I'm like, okay, he an average cat. Probably in here for armed robbery or something. Maybe a, he maybe even child support. He didn't look like a dude that was like threatening right sort of like me so he goes to the cell right by right next to mine right so it was maybe two hours later you just hear feet scuffling you know that skush, 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 skush. apparently him and his cellmate knew each other right i don't know what the beef was about it wasn't my business I just know they was in there and they was in there rumbling, right? Next thing you know, um, the CEO run up there. He tell them, y'all stop, stop fighting. It's y'all first warning, stop fighting. 
Second warning, stop fighting. So they stopped fighting, right? They backed up, right? We're going to say James Woods just backed out. And he was like, man, I'm not sleeping in the cell with him, man. Y'all going to have to get me up out of here, man. Y'all going to get me up out of here. So the CEO like, man, what happened? What, what What's going on in here? The dude that was originally in the cell wasn't saying nothing, right? Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that share button. This video right here is for all the haters that be out there talking so much trash about me. But I'm going to keep the videos going for the people that do love me. And whoever that is that keep on flagging my lives, talking about hate speech and all this and that, you know what you can do? But anyway, let me get back to the story. So then he have them. So he, he like, I'm not going back in that cell. I'm not, I'm not going back in that cell. So... The um, Depp, like, okay, well, deputy, CEO, that's what we call them. Up here, we call them deputies. Y'all call them CEOs. I don't know, whatever the case may be. So he like, no, nah, man, you gonna, we, we'll put you somewhere, but right now you might gonna have to go to the hole because it ain't no open sales, right? So he like, all right, man, whatever, whatever. So he like, if y'all can sleep in the same, and I know before y'all start running your miles, talk about they won't put them back in there, well, this will happen. So... He was like, well, if you can stay in there one more night, you know, it, it is what it is. So he like, all right, man, whatever. So dude, James Woods out there in the day room. He just pacing back and forth. He getting on the phone, calling whoever he calling. I ain't really paying attention because I'm doing my own thing. I'm over there playing chess. Oh, y'all see the charger right there. That's the charger right there that I got put up. Because that's when I got locked up three weeks ago. I told you I had to put it up, but there it go right there. Y'all hit that like button and share this video. Y'all know what it is. I'm dropping videos for y'all every day. Or dang near every day. So y'all can all y'all have to do is hit that like button. Y'all know what we do. Anyway, oh yeah, by the way, my live is suspended until the 22nd. But let's get back to the story. So next thing you know, I'm down there playing chess, right? Minding my own business. I see him on the phone calling his people or whatever the case may be. And, um, yeah, so now it's time for us to go lock up, right? And like I said, I'm right here at the cell, right here. My cell right here, his cell right here to the left of me. Get back in the cell. Now, I hear them kind of like talking. I guess they knew each other on the street. And apparently... James Woods raped this guy's sister, right? His sister was like 15 years old, and, and James Woods had to be like 20, 21 but when, when this happened. But at this point in time, James Woods may be like 29, 30 years old, right? And this dude that he in the cell with, like 35 years old. Y'all know what's about to happen. So all you dudes that be out there talking about, oh, I be capping and all this and that, yeah, well, here it go. So next thing you know, I hear him talking, and he was like, bro, bro, chill, chill. And he like, he like, no, 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 fuck that, fuck that, you chill. And he like, bitch, you raped my sister, you raped my sister. He was like, bro, man, leave that alone. He was like, what? You hear that, skirt, 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 skirt. Now, at this time, y'all, there was no depths on the floor, right? You, we didn't have no button and knee says that you can press, and then a deputy come through the speakerphone. No, <laughs> hey, it was, it was over. Make sure you know. You hear that skirt, 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 right? That thumping noise, right? Then you hear, bro, what you doing? Bro, we men, what you doing? Bro, chill, chill. Y'all better hit that like button and hit that follow button, right? It ain't going to be no part two, right? Here we go. So next thing you know, you hear, chill, chill, man. We men, we men, man. Man, hey, 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 you finna do it like that? You about to do it like that? It got quiet. It got quiet. Then you start hearing some grunting noises, right? Then you will hear, man, chill, chill. Yo, I'm going to just tell y'all. Y'all know what happened to James Woods. Do I got to say it? Do I got to say it? This was the payback. Yeah. James Woods raped this dude's sister, what, about... 10 about 13 years ago did not know that this man was going to be locked up with him did not know that he ended up in the cell with him see you can do something and here and here's this right here 
dude was running away. James Woods was running from the brother, right? Brother, when he did this around, um, I'm going to say he was about 20, 21. Dude got locked up when James turned like 22, 23. So he thought he was free and clear. Nah, uh-uh. That followed him back to the pen. And he was waiting on him. And it's, it's, it's just so happened he ended up in the same cell with him. I guess dude, when it was in process, you know, when he got into intake, I guess he left out that he possibly possibly could have had beef with somebody. Right? Ended up in the cell with him. Hey, he ended up raping him. Right? After he raped him, it was quiet. I ain't really too hear much of nothing. I was minding my own business. I put my headphones on after a while. I ain't want to hear that. You don't want to hear another man moaning. Come on, y'all. Put my headphones on. My celly, he was on the top bunk. He was reading the Bible. So my point is to telling this story, y'all. A lot of things that y'all do today could affect tomorrow. You know, karma, karma will get you eventually it might don't hit you right then and there but eventually it might come years later like 13 years later he thought he was free and clear he ain't know that he was gonna get locked up with the girl brother now i don't even know what he got it what he came in there for i don't know i don't know what i don't know what it was but after he raped them y'all next day when they popped the cells, he walked out. James Wood walked out. Went to the sergeant desk and said, hey, I've been raped. I need to get out of here. Sergeant got on that, got on that walkie-talkie. The goon squad came in there, came up to a man's cell, cuff up, got, got him up out of there. James Woods went to the infirmary. That's the jail hospital. Y'all be careful what y'all do out there because it cut, it can come back. Hit that like button. I'm out. The Dante Show. This story is about the gangbanger that decided that he didn't want to gangbang no more. When you win a gang, right? When you are in a gang while locked up, it's kind of hard to get out that gang. You know, they say blood in, blood out. A lot of these gangs really stand on that. There was this guy by the name of Lewis. Lewis was blood, 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 right? Lewis was a blood. Lewis was, was one of them type of guys that you know that the only reason why, the only reason why he joined the Bloods with for protection. Look at that grill. Ooh, that grill looks so nice. But anyway, let me get back to it. Lewis only joined the Bloods for protection. He wasn't gang banging the outside show. in the streets, in the, you know, the real world. He wasn't gang banging out in the real world. He started gang banging when he got locked up. Because when he got in there, and seeing that he was real, right? He seen that he was real. That if you ain't like me, that you can stand on your own and knock dudes out when it's time to get to it or pull out that you know what and apply pressure to somebody's body. If 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 a, it is what it is, he couldn't do that. He couldn't be a lone wolf. He had to join the wolf pack. He had to get out for protection. In jail, if you a weak dude and you ain't, and you wasn't banging out in the streets, one or two or three things gonna happen. Either you gonna become a Muslim, you gonna join a gang, or you gonna be like me. That you can't join the game because you can't have somebody telling you what to do outside of the guards. Me being the age that I am and the age that I was 
I cannot have somebody over me telling me what to do. How to... Well, anyway, so he joins the Bloods. This is how this goes down. If one of your fellow gang, me gang members get into a fight, you got to jump in, right? So, yeah, he got his confidence up. Every time there was a, a fight, he would take off on somebody because he knew that his fellow gang bangers was going to jump in and help him. Well, he been in a couple of squabbles. Yeah, true enough. But then they shot caller or they pop boss, whoever, the guy that controlled the guys in that area, he got shipped off. They caught him with a couple of them things. So they just shipped him off. Well, you got this new OG blood from Cali. He come in there regulating instantly rise through the ranks decorate they instantly you you know if you know you know he get in there and he restructures everything the right way well this guy been around for so long he can tell he weeding out the weaklings in the organization and well lewis Lewis the Dante show to be a weak one so you know what he do instead of disposing him by kicking him out the group he uses him actually when you think about it they are using each other right so Lewis now has signed up to be the guy that carry the you know what he the one carry the knives he the one transport the drugs he's a mule I want y'all to use y'all imagination on this one. You know how you smuggle, you know, contraband around the prison? You gotta put it in somewhere. You gotta put it where the sun don't shine at, if you get what I'm saying. Well, Lewis had to carry blades. And sometimes he had to put it where the sun is always shining right Lewis gets into a squabble right somebody owed him I think three or four suits some some white guy from a different organization I think it was the woods they had no business doing any business with each other at all anyway so that was a violation off off top Dude didn't want to pay. Long story short, he didn't want to pay him. Matter of fact, he said, I ain't paying you nothing. That's me. That, that's all me. I ain't paying you nothing. You ain't getting that back. Get up out of here. And smack him upside the head. So Lewis walks off. Hey, man. This, he hit me. Why you ain't take off on him? It, it was too many of them. It wasn't too many of them. It was just one on one. Right. This is why I say be who you are. If you a lame like me, be a lame in jail. If you are a game banger and somebody that gets down and get busy, then be that. Because eventually your true colors come out when it's time for you to get down and take care of your business. Where the leader of the blood say, yo, but y'all got to line it up. Because when he found out, he already knew what was happening. Dude was already in violation. So he said, all right, either you go in there and get your one-on-one -on, -one on, but y'all going to do it with the banger. Y'all going to do it with the banger with the swords. Y'all ain't just going to go fight. Y'all going to sword it out. Dude was terrified. He ain't never been in that immediate danger. Because every time he the got Dante into a squabble, show. it was always with his homies, with his fellow gang bangers. But now he had to get out by himself with a sword. So you know what he do? Do you know what he does? Sergeant, 
Help, help. I fear for my life. I fear for my life. Please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. I don't want a game bang no more. They trying to kill me. He PC'd up. He went to the hole. When the pressure came, it was busting pipes. The whole point of this story is this. If you're not a game banger, right, don't go to jail game banging. Right? If you're not a game member, stay out of it. This is the Dante Show. Hit that like button. Hit that follow button and share this video. I'm out. The Dante Show. Terry touched Jamal food with his hand. I'm going to tell you all a story about when an inmate touched another inmate fool with his hands. Now, I made a, a quick video about this some time way back. So I'm just going to put a spotlight on it. There was a guy named Terry Rhodes. Terry Rhodes. He was one of them white guys that was like 6'1", real slinky, beard. He looked like one of them white guys that maybe, and, and shout out to people that live in mobile homes because I lived in one before too. It ain't, it, it's not all bad. But he's one of them type of white dudes that live in a mobile home, drink Budweiser's, sit on this brown looking couch, have a radio playing and a scruffy dog in the background. He was one of them type of guys that smelled like cigarettes all day. So Terry Rose was like that. Now, Terry ordered this black dude named Jamal some eggs. And I told this story somewhat before, but it was about me. But this is another story about Terry and Jamal. So one day for breakfast, Terry go to Jamal and say, hey, do you want them scrambled eggs? And Jamal like, what you going to give me? He was like, well, I'll give you two of my double legs tomorrow if you can, the hard-boiled eggs, if you can give me your scrambled eggs today. And that's common in jail. You know, sometimes people do trade off from trades. You know, I'll give you this for that. And, you know, if I don't get it today, you can hit me off with it tomorrow. Or you can give me certain things throughout the week to cover that debt, right? So cool. So Jamal, get up, bring his tray over there, scrape the um the, the um the scrambled eggs onto Terry's tray. Bam. We good. Got me tomorrow with the hard boiled eggs. Cool. Great. There we go. So the next day come by and Terry he sees Jamal and he goes to Jamal and like, hey. Hey, bro, um, I can't give you the eggs today, but because I, I actually owed it to somebody else, so I'm going to give you um, double eggs tomorrow, and I give back the scrambled eggs because, you know, we get scrambled eggs tomorrow, and we get double eggs. We get double eggs for lunch tomorrow, um, actually for a snack right before lunch, but we get the um, scrambled eggs also. So... Jamar kind of sitting there salty because he wanted them eggs. So Jamar got a choice to make. Either he get up and cause a scene and put his hands on Terry and go to the hole or whatever the case may be and, and be without. Or he just chalk it up and be like, all right, all right, I, I, we'll do it tomorrow. I'll get the scrambled eggs and the hard boiled eggs tomorrow. And that's what he did. So the next day come around. Um, Jamal sees Terry. Yo, come here, come here. Yo, yo, come here, come here. Terry walks over there with the scrambled eggs, right? With his tray. He said, yo, let me get them scrambled eggs, right? He said, okay. He puts his hands in the scrambled eggs and goes to hand them off to Jamal. Jamal like, yo, what the f*** you doing? You don't put your hands... On my food, man, what is you doing? Terry's standing there like he don't know what's going on. Like he don't see the problem and putting his hands, his nasty hands inside this man's food. He don't see the problem at all. 
So Terry, like, what's the big deal? It's only eggs. Jamar sat there for a minute. And he was like, I can almost imagine what he was thinking. First, you already played him on a, on a double eggs yesterday, and then for the bo um for the scramble eggs today, you gonna sit up there and put your hands in and try to give it to me? That's a no no. Man, Jamar got up and was like, bam, took off on him. Boom, 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 boom. Had Terry all Terry all up on the on the table like, stop, stop, stop hitting me, quit hitting me, like kicking him, doing like this. Jamar like, man, why you touch my, why you touch my, why you touch my eggs? Don't touch my eggs. So at this time, his the trade and went this way. I didn't grab a piece of toast off um Jamar's um tray because it went that way. He wasn't thinking about it. he wasn't gonna eat it, so I had to grab me a piece of toast. I was hungry. So, so he beating up Terry. So at this point now, I know y'all waiting for what a guard sock, what a guard sock. In this pod that we was in, it was like a day room. It was a day room right here, and then back here is where you sleep at. And then it's the door right here and like a big window right here, but that's only showing the day room. We was back there, like in between the day room and the sleep room, I should say. So the guards couldn't see that. And plus, in this place, now listen, anybody while y'all sitting up there, oh, he lying. Franklin County, the workhouse, Columbus, Ohio. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You got to tap out. You got to go to the door and bang on the door until a guard come and get you out. If you're from Columbus, Ohio, y'all know what I'm talking about in Jackson Pike. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They called it the tap out. Terry couldn't tap out because Jamar was on him. Bam, bam. There's no guard watching watching us at all. So he ended up beating him up, but he ain't beating him up too bad, but he just gave him a couple of the face shots, a couple of the rib shots. Terry like this, stop, stop hitting me, stop hitting me. So after he get done, um, Whipping them out. Make sure y'all hit that like button and hit that follow button. After you get done whipping them out, oh yeah, hit the cash app too. After you get done whipping them out, he like, no, you better give me um the boiled eggs and you better not put your hands on my stuff again. So when um lunchtime roll around, he get his tray. Now he didn't beat him up real bad. Like his, he had a busted lip and like a couple, his face was all red, but... He ain't beat him, beat him down to the point where it was noticeable. So, lunchtime come around. He get the boiled eggs. Jamal walk up on him and just grab the eggs off his tray. And, and me mugged him. And he went back and sat down. Now, the point of this is for anybody that's new that's going to jail or prison, never, ever put your hands on another man food, okay? Even if you owe somebody some food, don't put your hands on that man food. If you owe a man some cookies and you got a bag of cookies, do not put your hand in that bag of cookies and hand it to him. You get that bag of cookies and you like shuffle it onto his plate or his hands. If you owe some man some chips or if a man even asks you for some chips, don't let that man put his hand in your bag. You don't know what he was doing before he came in and put his filthy hands in your bag. I'm just trying to bring awareness. Don't ever touch another man's food with your bare hands. Don't never let another man touch your food with his bare hands. Because you don't know what he was doing with his hands before he came to see you. And you best to believe that. Now hit that like button. Hit that follow button. I'm making a whole bunch more videos that y'all won't even believe. I'm out. Took his girlfriend in jail. Let me tell y'all the story real quick. This is a cautionary tale. To anybody that ever or will be locked up. I pray to God this never happened to nobody, okay? So there was an inmate, right? His name was inmate Charles. Okay? Charles was 19 years old and real naive. You know what? I'm not even going to say he was naive because this could happen to anybody that's not on game. So Charles comes in the pot. Charles got money on his books and money on the phone. So this guy, he be watching Charles. So one day he got real friendly with Charles, you know, warming up to him. And this is what I call getting got. I'm going to tell you all exactly what happened. He basically, he asked Charles, could he do a three-way for somebody? He watched Charles put in his PIN number 
and he memorized Charles' pin number. So then he started using the phone, calling other people off of Charles' account, basically. But let me give y'all the story, and I'm gonna tell y'all the story how he ended up taking Charles' girlfriend. Watch this. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, and hit that follow button, and share the video. So he get real friendly with Charles, right? Hey, Charles, my boy. That ain't his boy. Hey, Charles, my boy. Hey, could you do a three-way for me? Now, this dude, oh, I forgot to tell you the dude's name. The dude's name was Larry. The dude, black dude named Larry. Okay, and Charles was a white boy, 19 years old. And Larry was one of them dudes that you would see on the, at, on, at the corner talking about, yo, hey, yo, young blood, can I get a cigarette? Can I get a cigarette? Hey, young blood, you got 47 cents? Something ah, it's never an even number. Hey, young blood, you got a dollar and thirty four cent. That just happened to me the other day when I was at Kroger. This dude, I'm coming out of Kroger, and I see him looking at me. This dude, this random dude, he come up to me like, "Hey, hey, young blood, you got two dollars and eighty four cent." I'm like, "No, I ain't got, I ain't got no two dollars eighty four cent." He's like, "Oh, come on, man, I know you got two dollars eighty four cent." And I'm like, "Dude, get away from me, ew." I didn't say, dude, get away from me, ill. But I'm like, I didn't want to be bothered, man. I had to go get some crunch berries and some milk for the kids, man. I ain't got time to be conversating. But anyway, so he comes to him like, yo, hey, can I get this three-way? And um, Charles like, yeah, sure, why not? So he do a three-way. So I guess he calls his mama, whatever the case may be. And he like, um, he like, um. Hey, mom, uh, this the older black guy. Hey, mom, um, you know, I've been in here. Could you please send me something on my books or something? Because, you know, I'm not in here eating. And, and can you um, talk to my lawyer and see what's going on, right? But here's the catch. Charles didn't call nobody, man. He ain't called nobody. What he did was, uh, I mean, not Charles, the black dude. When 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 Charles did the three way, he called his girlfriend. Charles called his girlfriend. The black dude asked for a three way. So Charles got on the phone and was pretending to talk to his mama on the three way, but he didn't. He was talking to his girlfriend all the time. While Charles, I mean, while the black dude was talking, he was actually talking to the girlfriend, and she like quiet. She she not knowing what's going on. So then. When Charles walk off, then the black dude start hollering at Charles' girl. So he talking to her, kicking game to her, talking about, yeah, where you from? And all this and that. All alone, Charles not hip to what's going on. So this would go on for like maybe five days. Every time Charles would get on the phone, come the black dude. Yo, let me get a three-way. Let me get a three-way. Just all up in the air. Yo, let me get a three-way. Oh, I got a story for y'all. Oh, I got a story for y'all. I'm going to tell y'all about it, too. On the next video. Hit that like button. Hit that follow button. So you come over there like, yo, let me get a three-way. Let me get a three-way. Just like clockwork. So, um, he had given the phone. And dude would just start talking to his girl. And the messed up part about it, the girl didn't even tell Charles, like, what was going on. When it, then it would tell her, like, yo, he trying, he, he trying to talk to me and this and that. So she was foul, too. So long story short, she started putting money on the dual books. She started writing him letters. And Charles, she not picking the phone up for Charles no more. She ain't sending him letters. What would happen is, at this time, we when we have, the, when we have visitors... We have visitors in a chapel. So you can all um, you can see when the visitors come in from our dorm. Like if it's like a window, you can see the people coming because our the chapel was down here, but you have to walk past our pod to see the chapel when people go into the chapel. So we seen the visitors coming in. And guess what? His girl came for a visit. Y'all know where this story is going. She didn't come to see Charles. Uh-uh, she can't see that black dude. It gets real sticky. So, they, so Charles, so they call the people. Mr. Bell, let's go. You got a visit. Leroy, you got a visit. Calvin, you got a list. 
they call the people to come for a visit, right? They don't call him. You don't never hear Charles, but you hear that black dude name. So he like, man, my girl here, is she seeing somebody else? Like, does she got a relative in here? Can't be, because who, who in the pod that I know are her people? So he see the black dude go sit in front of her. He like, what the, what the heck going on here? Took his girl. So he like, man, what the, what is going on? He confused. He don't know what's going on. So after the, the visit over, he run up on him. He like, yo, what was that? What was you doing talking to my girl? Why, why is she here to see you? He looked him up and down like, that's my girl. He like, what you mean that's your girl? He said, that's my girl. You came here? That's my girl. Now, Charles was kind of timid. And Charles didn't want to fight. Charles looked like he never got into a fight in his life. So, the black dude is barking on him. I mean, barking on him. Talking about, this my girl. And you ain't going to do nothing. Yeah, she been sending me money. And every time you do that three-way, she been calling me. I don't need that three-way and all this and that. Because she, she put money on his phone now. All that. Commissary, all that. So like I said, this is a cautionary tale, man. If y'all want to know what happened, the black dude was just barking on him. Um, he Charles ended up going to the CO saying that he feared for his life and he checked out of our pod. That's what happened. It wasn't no fight. It was just a lot of yelling and shouting, mainly from the black dude barking on the little young white dude. So like I said, never do three ways for dudes in jail and never give nobody your pen. All right? Hit that like button, hit that follow button, share the video, hit the cash app up. I'm out. The Dante Show. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all a story about a guy named Jimmy. Jimmy was the type of dude that was a good dude. Well, I'm not going to say he was a good dude because ain't nobody good, but he was a guy that had a nine to five. He had a girlfriend and he was going to college part time. So Jimmy decides to one day go to the bar. And there's nothing wrong with going to the bar at all. But this particular night, he goes to the bar and he's drinking. Hennessy, Patron, you know, mixing the light with the dark. Well, instead of him getting an Uber or ride share, he, he decides to get behind the wheel and drive. Jimmy, maybe 12 minutes in, this ride, head on collision, head on collision. He murders a husband and a wife, newlyweds, on their way to the airport. This is where the story starts at. So I get a new cellmate. And I'm looking at him. And you can tell he, I could tell he ain't never been locked up before. At this point, I'm laying at the top bunk, on the top bunk. Two man cell. I don't got nobody at the bottom. So when he come in, I instantly hop up to make sure, you know, it ain't an enemy. And I'm just filling them out. And his whole spirit is just gone. He like whippering. Saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm I'm kind of curious, like, what this dude sorry about? Like, what what is he what is he in here for? Like if he in here for touching some kids, yo, we we gonna have to get out. And he gonna have to get up out of here. But you know, after he put his stuff on the bed and say, I'm like, yo, what's up with you? And he keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'm like, all right, man. So I lay back down, and he's still whimpering. You know, some guys on the tail like, hey, man, what's going on down there? You straight? What, what's going on? I'm like, no, man, my celly, he going through it right now. They're like, all right. So I'm like, man, what's up, man? Now, outside of our cell, we didn't have TVs in the cell. We had two TVs on the tier. It, it was a TV that they had put like 
okay so here's the cell light right here but then outside the cell is a tv on like you remember in in high school and middle school and elementary they put the tvs like on that um cart thing it was like that and they gave us like this long ruler to change the channel and turn the volume up and down so it was outside my cell like right here and then somebody another like you go down some more there's a tv and there's a tv so i'm laying there and I'm just watching the TV, and then boom, there it go. Channel 6 News, 10 o'clock. His crime come on TV. And it's him, newlyweds, deceased, rest in peace. Drunk driver, got his face all over there, mug shot all over the television. You hear guys down there to my left. You hear guys this way to my right. Talking hella crap. They not knowing that this dude is in my cell. Oh, y'all waiting for me to tell y'all what happened. So I'm like, yo, what's, what's, I said, yo, that's you? You did that? He like, yeah, man, I I never been in trouble before. I I'm I'm so sorry. I said you ain't gotta apologize to me. I'm a criminal just like you, homeboy. Don't be sorry to me. Be sorry to them people, family. He said, "What you think they gonna do to me?" I said, "Who?" He said, "The the, the inmates." I said, "Probably nothing." I mean, everybody in here. I mean, are. It's, this block is kind of chill, but as long as you ain't touch no kid or rape nobody, you know, you should, you should be good. You know, don't, don't let nobody take nothing from you. And, and I'm, I'm going to be real. This guy wasn't all the way there because, I mean, he just killed two people and he didn't mean it. But this is why I tell y'all stop drinking and driving. Because that one shot of liquor or two shots and you think that you good to drive. But then, well, this is what happens. Long story short, y'all, they gave this man 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years. Minimum, he have to do 10 years. Minimum. But this is, the story doesn't end there with the jail sentence. Nah, uh This story doesn't end it doesn't end too well. In fact, I'm going to get to the point because I know y'all like for me to get straight to the point. I get it. I get it. Two years into this man's bed, I guess he was having dreams, nightmares, traumatized about what he did. Because when he missed that, when he mixed that dark with that white liquor, and murdered them two people in a car accident, he couldn't handle it no more. He started getting into drugs while locked up. Bad drugs. That had, have y'all seen the videos when these guys be all stiff and all foaming at the mouth? Because they done took some Heron, some bad heron or whatever thing they be taking up in there. Well, he was getting high every day to try to take himself out of his situation. It got so bad for this man, he tried to take an attempt. Well, he attempted multiple times to take his own self up out of this world. And where one day he finally succeeded. Stop drinking and driving. Stop drinking and driving. Stop. Stop drinking and driving. This is the Dante Show. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all share this video. I'm out. The Dante Show.